on air. It isn't changing. Why do you need me to? Now I see black. <laughs> ah, there we are. Maybe? Ah, good. Hello again. I, you know, if no one's probably here yet, it's not fair for me to, 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 to turn things off, but um, I lost where the chat activation button is. So false start, trying again, because I have no idea what I'm doing and you guys get punished for it. And that's really not cool at all. But uh, hopefully we're back. Uh, hello again. That previous one probably won't get posted. Um, chances are you heard me swear because we were probably uh, streaming before I was aware of it. I don't think that happened. I don't think you heard any of those. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Odin of Odin Makes. You probably know that because that's the channel that you're watching. Uh, and today I'm working here with a good friend of mine. Hi, I'm Felicia. Nice to meet you all. And we're going to continue our project of working on Geralt's vanilla Witcher armor from The Witcher 3. We've been working on this all month uh, on Mondays. Right now we're planning on continuing to work on this every Monday until uh, we have the armor done that we can put it on with the rest of the costume because uh, I met up with a good friend uh, or talked to it. I met up, met up too, but I've got a friend who's got the rest of the outfit that's going to loan it to us so when we get the armor finished, we can do a full Witcher cosplay using the pieces that, that Thor is going to uh, loan to us, Thor Kiles is going to loan to us. And, uh, and so we'll be able to fully dress up um, somebody, I think we know who, in, in the final costume. But that's not going to happen for a little bit. We need to get the rest of this done first. And obviously it's taken a while. <laughs> it's taking a while. Now for those of you who don't know, uh, when you watch my show, it looks like, oh, he makes things in 15 minutes. No, I make things in about 25 to 30 hours uh, but editing makes it go by faster because it's usually not that much fun to watch I would think knit. yeah to watch <laughs> us knit live except this we are doing live you get to watch us knit live live and it's because <laughs> I spend the rest of my week making videos and she spends the rest of her week uh, actually going to her day job and making money uh, we only work on this during the live stream so between distracting ourselves, talking to you, which actually is the most fun of it, yeah. uh, and then working on the costume, because working with the uh, foam chain mail from, from Ben Eady, this stuff is really cool, and what oh, started it. the whole thing is fun, but um, it's going to take a while. We may not be done until January. But anyway, <laughs> we're, this is what we're doing, and hey, everybody is watching right now. We've been talking about this, and I'll make the first announcement right now, uh, I think. Maybe we said it last week, too. No, we we didn't? No. Oh, okay. So Halloween night, we're going to do another live stream. We're going to do it midnight our time, which is California. So it's going to be extremely late for most of you, and it may be early morning for some of you on November 1st. And it may be extra tricky because this Halloween at midnight, it happens twice. It happens twice. It's going to be daylight savings. So even though only, uh, even though for us two hours will go by, it'll actually be kind of a time warp and we'll start at midnight and we'll be done at 1 a.m. But it'll take 120 minutes to get there. And that's, you know, like all of our live streams, it that's going to accordion. We may not start exactly on time. We may not end exactly on time, but we're going to try and do a couple of extra things. Uh, that's going to be a completely interacting with you live stream. All we want to do is yeah. talk no to you. Armor. No witcher armor, no building, but she's got, if for those of you who know, a Z rack, which is a, a clothing rack full of costumes. We'll be dragging those in, maybe doing some quick changes, talking about whatever. And uh, I'm going to set up a Discord server with my patrons. So if you're a member of my, of my Patreon, you'll have exclusive chat uh, connectivity. You'll be able to send in some stuff early that we can yes. uh, look I at. I want to answer your questions. So ask me questions about costumes and props. That's what we do, costumes and props. That's what so we do. Ask us your questions and we'll be more than willing to help answer them, especially if you give them to us early. So Right. So so if you're a patron, you get a chance to ask us early and you can send us pictures early and we'll, we'll do our best to figure out how in our incredibly low tech way to, to share pictures with you. We probably will even have a cameraman, so you might get to see a little more of the studio on Halloween. It's gonna, it should be a fun stream. Yes. And then, of course, if, if you're a Patreon member and you want to send in a question and can't watch us live, that's okay because the live stream will still be available after the fact. And you still hopefully get to see your picture taken, uh, your picture showed. So later today, I will post the, the Discord information to my Patreons. Uh, I haven't, haven't, I know which level I'm going to use, but there's a certain level that's going to have access to, to that Discord. And it uh, should be a lot of fun. And then that'll be a permanent thing. It won't just be for this live stream. That will be permanent for my, for my Patreon uh, peoples. For your Patreon account? For my Patreon accounts, yes. 
and I'm seeing chat blowing up, which is what I want it to do. <laughs> Let me pop this out and get a full, uh, full thing. Oh yes. Also, uh, so we are in California. Uh, so it and and in, in the Central Valley of California, I'm actually in the Sacramento area. So it never actually really gets truly cold from any northern country or, or state's point of view but it does get kind of chilly it's freezing today <laughs> for me uh you know, i'm happy but i'm i you know i can work in a freezer uh so we might be changing positions so you can hit yes the heater's <laughs> over there <laughs> well, the heater's here it kind of blows this way and so. normally i sit with the heater i mean the air conditioning and so i so, Check yeah. on that side of the air conditioning so we're, we're gonna go ahead and trade sides which is no big deal we just might have to move a couple things around uh but it's gonna be kind of fun with some of the live streams coming up because as it gets colder, it's colder the room temperature. It affects dry time for glue. It affects dry time for paint. Uh, oh it can affect gosh. how well paint can work. Oh, spray paint, if you are doing it in the cold. Yes. And it's not setting and it's a big pain in the ass. I know the secret. Okay, if it's not, so this is after you've sprayed it and it's no. not setting. Yeah, no, okay, good. No, I, th I you, thought you had a secret for that. I know no, the no, secret no, no, beforehand. No, no. Yeah, no, if you want it to spray in the cold and you're not going to let the cold stop you and right. you are going to spray, it's not going to set. Know that now. Right, no, it's not. But if you take the can of spray paint and put it in a warm bucket of water right, and you let it get the same temperature as the warm bucket of water, then you spray it. Absolutely. And it works so much better. Absolutely. That's actually what so I've been doing. Better. Yeah, what I've been doing as well. Now I know uh, there may be even better secrets for those of you who live where there's actually snow, but because uh, it doesn't snow here. No, but it gets too cold to actually use spray paint yeah. effectively. So when it's too cold, when it gets too dark, a nice warm bucket of water, keeping the cans in the bucket of water till they're used, put them back in, keeping the temperature inside. I have spamming going on. I thought I had slow chat on. Did I lose slow chat? I don't know. Live chat. Yep. Enable slow mode. Save. <sighs> Thank you for being consistent. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's my secret for um, spray painting. As somebody who has had to spray paint a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things. Right. Yeah. So I've enabled slow mode in the chat because once again, I think, you know, you, I click a button, it's going to stay. No. Yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't see the chat the first time, but uh, so I got slow mode on. Sorry about the spamming. Uh, I have no interest in spamming um, at all. And so um, that's totally not cool. Okay. I probably should put some paper before I start gluing. Sure. Oh, cool, Jaden. Oh, right on, Jaden L. Um, Jaden L's telling me he's starting the Evil Dead chainsaw build from DIY Prop Shop. Sweet. Mm. I think Jaden and I talked a little bit because of the Evil Dead hand that I did last week. Oh, I gotta love the Halloween props, right? Yeah, I gotta love the Halloween props. So I was gonna work on uh, the kind of right clam chills. You. Great, thank you. Uh, so once again, also as she's getting set up, I'm wearing a different T-shirt. During my uh, show, I like wearing my, my, my standard black collared T-shirt because as I build a project over multiple days, you edit it together, everything looks consistent. Uh, and I have usually have more than one shirt. I've got like a dozen of those shirts. I've lost a few because you spill glue on them. Um, so the live streams, why not wear different shirts? I've got the Flatwoods Monster T-shirt. This is actually a glow-in-the-dark T-shirt. This was sent to me from a viewer because we had made the Fallout 76 uh, vault dweller costume. Well, the Flatwoods monster is a West Virginia uh, cryptozoid monster and actually appears in that, in that game of Fallout, in Fallout 76. I think the Mothman probably does too. So they actually sent me this huge care, care uh, package of t-shirts and materials from the Flatwood Monster Museum, which I thought was really cool. I love swag and then that's good yeah, swag. Yeah, this is good <laughs> swag. This is really cool. So let me be honest with you. If you guys send me cryptozoid t-shirts, you know I'll wear it. <laughs> Where did my box go? Um, <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Fan mail. Let's see. <laughs> so he sent me two more t-shirts. So I got two more non-black t-shirts I can wear in the future. But uh, a full DVD documentary, which uh, 
and also gave me a whole bunch of bumper stickers and uh, postcards all about the Flatwoods Monster. I'll do a, I'll do a, like an Instagram picture of this here after the stream. A resin cast of the monster itself that's uh, from a 3D print. Go hit number three or two, you might be able to get that closer to a... Which camera are we? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. That oh, it is that. All right. Unfortunately, nothing zooms. You get too close and it, it'll just go out of focus. But yeah, so it's uh, it's about four inches tall and it's it's a, it's a resin cast of the monster. Uh, sent a uh, claws in a pen of the friendly version of the monster and uh, a little patch. I need to look up the lore to understand why it's uh, 304. I don't know, but there's squash pennies and guitar picks. There's a lot of really way more stuff than I expected in here. This is because he, he contacted first saying, hey, do you do you want to, what, what's your t-shirt size? I want to send you this Flatwood Monster stuff. And this came from, doesn't quite say here. I've got uh, Flatwood's Monster Museum. Yes. On 808 Main Street in Sutton, West Virginia. Wow. Yeah. It looks like it came from Mr. Anderson, which is a great Matrix uh, quote, right? <laughs> because unfortunately I am ill prepared to have the proper name to give credit. So if you're watching Mr. Anderson, I'm really sorry, but to the Flatwood Monster Museum, thank you guys, this stuff is cool. I love the glow in the dark shirt. Thanks for swag. <laughs> Thanks for swag. Thanks for cool swag. <laughs> Odd parts of the job that I got to do when I first worked at Smosh. That was one of the I got odd to parts. I go through their fan mail. Oh right. Their fans are crazy, but I love oh, how yeah. crazy they are. So uh, one of the, okay, we both worked for Smosh uh, for a number of years. I worked there from what uh, 2014 to about 2018, somewhere in that area, about four years. Uh, yeah. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, the Smosh house. There was a three-bedroom house. Yeah, three bedroom house yeah. that, that, that the guys originally had uh, when they were roommates when they started Smosh. Well, they maintained renting that house all, all, up until they finally left the Sacramento area. Um, the garage, which is a two car garage for that house, had those postal service buckets, you know, the big like plastic buttons, buckets you carry mail around in. They had those full of fan mail. And yeah, we were welcome to open up fan mail from time to time because they had stopped doing fan mail Friday, but still just kept flooding in because the video still existed. Yeah. And, um, you know, share it with them, take pictures of it, whatever. There was one box I opened up. It was full of like Jones soda and, and, and older, um, it was older at that point because the box had been there well over a year, but it was a bunch of the of, of the, the, the craft sodas, right? And one of the ones they had was, I think, Lenonade, which was really kind of kind of cool. Did it was you just, drink it? Yeah, actually I did. <laughs> the Lenonade was cool. Uh, the cap was just, a, it was just a bottle cap with the hammer and sickle CCCP on it. So I saved the bottle caps. So I have it up next to my pit boy. I don't trust <laughs> any of the food or drink in there, honestly. <laughs> like, I got some weird stuff. Right? Like locks of hair and... At least I think it was Leninade. It may not have been. Wedding oh. invitations. Oh, there were so many wedding invitations oh that were... That were uh, wedding invitations. Now, do you remember when you were practicing your printing and you had your uh, supersized spacings with the dots to help you keep your lower cases in the right spot? Wedding invitations written on that paper. Oh, it was fun. Going it was fun, that. yeah. But I love, I love the mail. I yeah. know they got to a point where they're like... Oh. <laughs> And the other, the other fun thing is uh, because the, the fans were, the majority of the fans were so young, they didn't understand the postal service. So they put together this, this big package with stuff, like, like an envelope with jello in it, and put a single stamp on it and then send it off to Smosh. And so then they would suddenly get stuck with this, well, if you want it, it's this much extra postage for us to do, deliver it. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Taryn was the one telling, telling me that she would often have to go in and pay the difference for a lot of stuff that got delivered because it was insufficient postage. Okay. But it was set up in such a way that they would still accept it and pay the difference. I would have <laughs> kids writing checks in their parents' checkbooks. Oh, wow, I didn't see any of those. <laughs> was a I've, got a, of I've those. got a Norwegian coin that I kept. Well, I think that, the, that was really cool. You know, I would put in a box because we'd use it. Right. So, like, we got a lot of boner dollars where they would write... Oh, you know, right. Like one Turn into, it to a boner. Yeah. yeah. And so we would use those for when we used them for, like, costumes when there was money coming right. in. Right. Yeah. It was all from the mail. I would just, we got, like, stacked. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good costume prop money. Right. It was. <laughs> okay. Let's see what people are saying. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. Turk. Turk. By the way, you can hear us, right? 
my, my, my equipment says that we're on and you can hear us, but you can hear us, right? We haven't said all this to, you know, a muted microphone. Let's see. Hey, Super Odin. Hey. How's it going? Hello there. Who said Goodbye, that? Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye. Oh, good. They can hear us. Yeah. Son of Goku says hi, and so does Abigail Mendoza. Yeah, oh, these are sweet. Saying hi. hi. Ah, hello. Um... Hello from Brazil. I love Felicia. Aw, thank you. Oh, right on. Hello, Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Uh, Doggy trainer says hello. Oh, yeah. The dogs aren't here today. Right. The dogs aren't here today. So uh, I actually rent space out of a working studio uh, in, in Sacramento. And um, there is uh, there's another client here who is using the green screen stage. So, and they're recording audio because they're, they're doing a, a commercial, whatever it is. And so just to be safe, just to make sure that if anyone knocked on my door and here, the guys didn't bark, no dogs today. So I'm sorry. Dogs. No okay. dogs. They're happy. They'll be back. They'll be back. They'll yeah. be here for Halloween. Sweet. The dogs will be here for Halloween. That's good. Yeah. In fact, I'll walk over here and turn on my uh, on-air light because I forgot to do that. They like your shirt. Thank you. I like my shirt, too. Hello from Florida. Right on. Hello, Florida. Hope you guys are nice and toasty. Hey, Odin. I've seen all caps from back here. I have uh, one contact in today, so I can actually kind of read. Oh, I can't read when I'm over there at all. <laughs> Hello, uh, it's, it's Nicole from Patreon. Hello, Nicole. Uh, Hi, from Mars. How are you doing? From Mars? Sweet. Didn't realize. I know they're looking at setting up a 4G network on the moon. I didn't know they had internet on, the Mars yet, on Mars yet. I don't know. I hear oh. men are from Mars, so there's that. Well, there's that. Um, yeah. yeah, there's water on the moon now, so I guess it's always been there, but we know it's there now. Uh, new school every Monday. Oh, good. Hi from Italy. Hi. Oh, right on. Hello, Italy. That's pretty late, isn't it? <laughs> Italy, that's not too much later than, than... I don't know. We have a weird time on Monday. Sorry about Mondays, guys. It's right. my day off. <laughs> so it works. Well, it's noon for us, and so I know from my friends in the UK that it's uh, 8 p.m. for them. So okay. Italy's probably more like 10? I'm gonna guess. I don't know. It may. It's Italy's pretty directly south, isn't it? May only be eight or nine. All right. Um, right behind you. Right behind me. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> what am I doing? You are pulling out the clamshell because that's almost done. I'm pulling out the clamshell because it's almost done. I'm also trying to be a host and talk to people Say and hi to, people. hi to people. Yeah, I'm just working on the project. It's almost done. It's so close. <laughs> this part is so close. Okay, so I've got the, the chess pieces here. How do you pronounce that? Pronounce that. <laughs> oh, you want me to see? Oh, now it's moved. I wouldn't. Hello, Latvia? 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 Well, hello. Hello! Now, now my spider sense is tingling. We get this 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 heart and, and a smiley face. I'm decent with geography and countries, but no, Latvia isn't the country that Doctor Doom's from, right? I'm asking someone else who worked in the comic shop who's in the who's in the room. Joe, some of you may have seen him. This is the guy that gets trapped in the Gundam costume. No, no. So no, Latvia it's, is a real country. It's, it's a uh, it's a fictional country that Doctor Doom comes from. It is, but Latvia is a real country. Yeah. Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm embarrassing myself on the internet. I'm really sorry. But hey, you know when I went to school and it was the uh, it was it was it was the American public education system. Yeah, geography wasn't important. What I learned, I learned because I had interest in it. <laughs> so I'm very sorry. But hello, Latvia. Yeah. Distracted. That's okay. It's 8:25 p.m. in Italy. Oh, okay. Oh, so That's it's the same time zone. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, okay. So we did mention it before the last video and planning to... Uh... We did? Well, it may not be the same thing mentioning now. I'm not sure. I had to do the match. Sweet. I can almost read it. It's just far enough away that I can almost read it. So I'm working on the chest armor. I think I picked this up once. Um... Is that got the, the pieces. Front or the back? This is this is the front. Did you label them? Yeah. No, I know, but okay. on the back. It's the right. Oh, but this one. Oh, that one's not labeled yet. Then I apologize. I was just. Looking I saw for this one was. This one's got an R on it. So this one's labeled. Yeah. No, I was just like, okay, orientation. Where's the labeling? But that one has it. Yeah. And of course, I've got the icon, so I don't want to like. So yeah, just um, what I want to do is 
I've made a, uh, a flat panel, but I need to have the, the little superhero pectoral pop out on it. And I started working on this last stream. What I'm gonna do is glue this piece on in order to get it to kind of pop out. And uh, kind of superhero chiseled Kind of look. superhero chiseled look, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let me do something. Here in the Netherlands as well. Oh, really? And South Africa. Are the dogs there today? No, not today. Um, hey, Odin, you still rocking that Ford Ranger? <laughs> I'm still rocking that Ford Ranger, absolutely. Same truck you saw in the Portal video, or unless you saw, or the Captain America shield build. Yep. I have a, a white 2009 Ford Ranger, and, and it really, with all the fires we had this summer, it really needs to go to the car wash. <laughs> I know, I, right? Everything like, has this weird layer of ash on it right now. I think it's like post-apocalyptic or something. Yeah, it feels like it, yeah. I, I had stuff in the bed of my truck up until last night, and now that I got that out, I can uh, actually get my truck washed. Ah. It's probably too late. It's probably like somewhat ruined now, but you yeah, know, whatever, I guess. So I'm off camera, I'm setting up uh, hopefully a close-up shot of, it's there we are. 30 p.m. in Germany right Really? Now. Okay. In Germany. Hello, Germany. And I'll try to set up a different, know, sorry, sorry. I'll try to set up a different microphone situations uh, for Saturday and give that a test and hopefully without it being on me, because I'm wearing the mic right here, uh, if we move around and change Halloween costumes and play around, it won't be this shuffling, horrible mess. <laughs> we'll we'll pre-think audio. We'll pre-think audio a little bit. We'll pre-think something a little bit. I get concerned about making sure all the cameras are set up and all the cameras are focused. And I'm so used to shooting my own videos where I just put the microphone on myself. I don't consider, I mean, I have, but I, I forget that I need to try something for two people audio. Let me hit number three. Um, the scissors. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll get the scissors. So I've got my uh, chest plate that I'm using, and what I've got is this kind of a Nike swish piece, and I've got a uh, bevel cut on the back here. This ends up being lower than I thought it was going to be. Oh, hey, by the way, here's my shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and what I want to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it from one side along that bevel and follow it around. I gotta make sure I start in the, in the center. And I'll get that kind of three-dimensional bump that Geralt's got on the bottom of his, of his chest armor. And the plan with this is to make it all out of this uh, heavier what the foam. Go ahead and hit camera one. Camera one. Thank you. Um, pardon me if I try to technical direct and host at the same time because we're a professional channel. Uh, we're making the, out of this particular type of foam, it's a kind of a rubberized what the foam, but we're gonna cover it with either leather or vinyl or, or, or a material that doesn't exist in our shop yet, but will. Unobtainium. <laughs> Unobtainium, I think it's a little easier to find than that. No, I know, but I just <laughs> like the, I need it to have certain properties and principles, so it's just called unobtainium until it's invented. Right, it's, it's the speci special thing that makes, uh, makes the plot of the story work until Avatar came along and then that was the name of the element in the planet. <laughs> Unobtainium. Unobtainium. Uh, actually, it was called Unobtainium, I think, in the delightful movie The Core. The, the early 2000s remake of the H.G. Wells uh, book, and you know, Journey to the Center of the Earth, and it was a movie from the 60s, which was great fun, but uh, is that Wells or Vern? Well, anyway, one of the two. Oh, Classic, wow. Classical book. Um, so The Core was a horrible movie, but it was fun. And the, the hull of the ship was, was made out of unobtainium because the idea was the more pressure you put on the metal, the stronger it got. Therefore, you could drill to the center of the earth and it wouldn't just crush like a tin can. <laughs> Convenient properties that works really well on paper. Do we have the, um, I know you're working on that. It's all right. The, um, I'm, I'm gonna try and shut up and make something happen. The rivets, uh, the big rivets should be in the little tiny oh, cardboard box okay. and then the other ones are on top. Yeah. Okay, cool. Not there yet, but that's the next. You're getting there, yeah. Yeah, getting towards that. Make sure they have those. Let's see, what are people saying? Oh! Did <laughs> <laughs> you? Uh-oh. So you can squeeze through there? That's kind of funny. You totally spun Gundam all the way around. I don't know. 
I think blue is kind of sus. <laughs> Is that um, automotive? This, this is automotive window film. Uh, at, uh, there's a local place here called Tap Plastics. It's a plastic chain in, in on the West Coast. Right, and I can I can uh, buy the window film by the yard from them. Now some auto parts stores, you can just get a roll of it. But what I've done here is it still has the, the, the thin vinyl outside, so it's got some protection. And then I've sewed the window film. So it's the thin the vinyl oh, and the window yeah. film sewn together as one piece as one piece yeah. and then top stitched on like I did the original video and so yeah nice. that, that was one of the updates we did and then there's another one which is right here if Joe can show us Joe's on camera there right yeah yes let me move the glue out of the way the, <laughs> magnets, they work. the magnets work really well unlike the Ziploc bags where they had this weird little pooch this actually seals up really well and, and keeps the outside look well, flat it's what you have when you're it, asking for what you need. Yes, and I thought I had magnetic tape when we were doing it, and I didn't. And then also, uh, I've got the gussets in the feet, so he's walking on his shoes, which oh, is really going to be really, really hard to show on these cameras. But you can try on really four. four. You can try on four. I don't know if we got any light yeah, back here. Let me turn my. Uh, Let me just move that. There you go. Yeah, I'm really slowly yeah, getting into. Right there, right there. We see the feet. That. Right is that helping at all? No, keep your feet down. Oh. You can see it if you keep them down there. See? Yeah, okay. kind of. The top of your shoes, but yeah, it's sort of. Shape. But anyway. Safer to run around in. Much safer, much easier to run around in. Much easier to, uh, to put the costume on because you can stick your feet through the legs. First. And, and pull the costume up more so you're not crushing down. Well, I'm not crushing down into a fetal position to try and get into it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to crawl back into the egg. Yeah. But anyway. Well, I'm off. You're off? Turn around. Show off your backpack. You are dusty. Like, really dusty. <laughs> if for anyone wondering, that's how much noise the fans make. So, it was almost a bad decision to put the, the pattern for this on Etsy because everyone seems to think they're getting a finished costume for five bucks. But uh, I did put the full pattern for this up on Etsy. And this week, I'll be doing an update video on these costumes showing the, uh, the, the, the shiny Mylar face, uh, the, the hand holds, changing the feet and lots and lots of experimentations to try and get uh, ripstop uh, nylon that isn't windproof and doesn't retain air pressure to become windproof and retain air pressure. Yeah, yeah, spoiler alert, it, it didn't effing work. It's better to just line it. It's better, to, yeah, it's better to line it from the start or, or just make sure with a small test piece that the fabric you bought is gonna work to begin with. At the fabric store, I know COVID's a thing, but I was breathing through it like a face mask. If it breathed through it, not gonna work. Yeah, not gonna work. It, 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 it needs to be airtight. It really needs to be airtight. The, uh, I actually did a small bit of a test, it'll be in the video with a hairdryer, and um, the orange leaks a little bit, uh, but the, the red and the purple, like the first, the suit lining purple I was trying to use to begin with, it's no resistance at all. And so it just can't retain the pressure and can't inflate. Uh, but what's fun is from those Etsy cells from the people who have successfully built them, and there's been a few, uh, I've gotten a couple of pictures and, it, uh, and I love the people who've taken it and printed the pattern out at 80% size or 66% size. So it actually will, uh, will fit their, their younger uh, children, people who are only like four feet tall. Although it fits me and you and right. I'm the short. So. Right. Yeah. We made that costume to fit a range of size, which I'm very proud of how it really works. I'm 5'4", I'm a little short, but it does fit me. And Absolutely. Because Joe is the same height. Yeah. Or maybe a tiny bit shorter. Yeah. I'm a and uh, he was wearing a costume that was sized to fit me. So it totally works. But making it a little bit smaller not only fits you know smaller areas better, it's less volume for that poor fan to try to inflate. So it actually works better. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I've been ignoring people. That's all right. We had a blue guy walk through. We had a big blue meanie. Right? <laughs> hey, Odin, aside from the manga spacesuits, which prop would you pick as your favorite to be used for Halloween? Well, it depends on the party you go to. But anyway. Absolutely. It depends on the party you go to. I have worn uh, ash to, uh, to Halloween parties because I had the chainsaw and I quickly made a... Uh, um, 
a boomstick and, and, and a chest harness. Uh, but I didn't tear the shirt all up because it was outside. I've also done a casual Hellboy where I just wore a black t-shirt, painted my arms red, wore my fist to doom, and uh, made a couple of uh, horns. Um, so what was it what I suggest or what costumes did I like? No, what was your favorite prop? Okay, what was my but, favorite prop? Yeah. If we go like that, I liked being Saw because I got to ride around on a tiny tricycle and it was fun. Right. So like, it, how much fun you had at the party really depends. Really depends. Um, so yeah, Ash I thought was a lot of fun because it's an extreme, I can set the chainsaw down, take my hand out, and now I'm just an idiot in a blue shirt. Yeah, Ash is an idiot, I can say that. And um, so that worked out really well. My favorite one to wear had to have been when I was doing the Guar costumes because we made those for Halloween and, and those were imposing and impressive and, and, and huge and sweaty and pantsless and they were a lot of fun to wear. They would be completely impractical inside in any kind of Halloween party in anyone's apartment. But you go out to a, a, a large area where a contest is or, or outside when, like, and they're fantastic. Yeah, together, back when, you know. <laughs> right, back when that actually could happen. That was, that was still my, probably my favorite one. Um, I also did uh, for Halloween one year, uh, guy, what was that, 89? That was a long time ago. Uh, Darkness from the movie Legend. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, Tim Curry played the giant red demon uh, or devil from uh, uh, in, the, in Ridley Scott's movie Legend. That was like 1986. Oh, yeah. We used that, the muscle piece for Courtney. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that old cost, anyways. Right. I love that thing. So I made that one because, yeah, that's, that's I really like that one. And that was a great Halloween thing to do. And, got, and because it's such a super stylized devil, that was, I was wearing 14 inch platform shoes, so I was huge. Got some really good reactions out of that. Yeah, I won uh, first place at the local radio station contest for that, which was $1,000 in, you know, 25 years ago or whatever it was. Now I'm, I'm questioning my 89. I think that might have been more like 91, 92, which is still basically 30 years. Okay. Hi from Ohio. Well, hello there, Ohio. I have cousins there. I have family there. This one. I have extended, very, very extended family. Is this cosplay play going to incorporate any actual metal or leather, or is it all foam? It will incorporate actual leather. Uh, it will incorporate a minimal amount of metal in, in the sense of like, you know, accent Ribbons. pieces, but we're not making plate mail. The chain mail is out of foam. Because the idea is to make cosplay, not armor. Well, it, it's, I wanted to play with the chain foam. The right, foam we wanted the chain, chain foam chain mail. And honestly, I say that, but I have nothing negative to say about armor. I know a number of people that do the SCA and have full sets of gorgeous plate mail armor that you can go out in the field and beat on each other with. Um, and I've used it and I like it and it yeah. works, but... And you could totally wear that type of a suit of armor into a con if you wanted to, but you can't bring a metal sword because that's a weapon. Well, we've got metal swords to play with. So. We do, but you know, Anyways. that's that's what we're doing. But. At least the cons here in California won't allow live steel as, as a, a sword weapon at the con, which is annoying because dealers sell them, but the idea is as a customer, if you buy such a thing from a dealer, you have to remove it from the con and put it in your vehicle and then you can come back in. Uh, that's, that's the ruling on that, um, which is pretty loose, but that's what they say they do. Well, at least it helps. Yeah, it helps. But. So yeah, we'll incorporate uh, bits and pieces, but we're not making a uh, uh, we we're no not making a movie. We have to play with. Yeah. To just see if it'll like wear the straps. Right. Doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But we're not making a a, a, a a hero costume for a movie type of a thing. Jacob Obert says, "Can you shout out to me? I'm sleepy. I need to stay awake." <laughs> Jacob Obert. Do you oh, really? Go to bed. Go to bed, Jacob. <laughs> um, hello from Australia. Oh, sweet. Hello, Australia. I have no idea what time it is in Australia. <laughs> and for all I know, it's the same time just I know tomorrow. We're, right? Back. Because <laughs> being on the west coast of the U.S., we're towards the end of the day cycle, right? Yeah. Which is okay. Awesome. from Switzerland. Hello, Switzerland. Yeah. 
Oh, I did this backwards. I put the one that doesn't matter cover it. Okay. What are you guys going as for Halloween? Mm. A parent. <laughs> um, not really. My, 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 my boys are, are graduated college. Um, I'm going to be working on something uh, this week for a video that will come out on the 4th. And that's what I plan on wearing for the live stream. But for the actual Halloween night, I might wear the inflatable Among Us costume. I'll probably just be casual. Um, I know Joe's going to wear the Gundam at least a little bit. But um, I don't even know if we're going to get any trick-or-treaters or anything this year. It's going to kind of weird. We're going to set up just in case. And we're going to try and set it up in such a way that it's going to be easy to, 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 to hand things out that's safe. Uh, we've, we've got a popcorn machine. Usually at home we set up a, you know, like this carnival popcorn machines and we just do bags of popcorn for everyone and it's great fun, but can't do that this year. So I don't know. I don't know. I usually don't pre-plan my costumes. I, they just kind of happen. Like a couple years ago I did all the versions of Little Mermaid because I had red hair at the time. So I did her as a mermaid in the sail dress, in the pink dress, and in that blue outfit. But. I don't know. I don't pre-think it until like the day before, maybe the day of. Right. But it's not like I don't have a hundred costumes, so there's that. Okay. Um, greetings from Chicago. Oh, hello, Chicago. Hi, Chicago. Okay. Oh, thank you, Bruce Marvel eighty eight. He thinks I rock. Oh, nice. And Honest John says, hey, Odin, we love your videos. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Honest John. Trick-or-treaters must be super thrilled to come to your house at normal times. <laughs> at normal times and non trick or well, I try not to advertise my home address, so I, I don't think I have. <laughs> well, you know, as... When you go trick-or-treating, you know the house with the full-size candy bars, you know you do. the house that has the cool decorations, and you know the whole, the houses that you stay away from. Right. And, 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 and we hear, you know the houses that have the, well, I did mention it before, that have the popcorn machine and the cotton candy machine. Those are the two things we set up usually. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Our poor cotton candy machine has seen better days. It's 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 not balanced anymore, so it doesn't anymore. It kind of goes. It's not. <laughs> it's like probably should put a bunch of steampunk parts on it. Then it would work really well. <laughs> I kind of this year is the first year I'm not doing it since I was like ten. But going to my aunt's house, my aunt bakes like delicious goodies. Like <laughs> she can bake, and so we start off at her house at her party with tons of freshly baked delicious goodies and treats and dinner. And then we go around the block once, end up with like a giant bag of full-size candy bars so that we... That's amazing. Yeah, no, there's a reason we go to her house. And uh -huh. <laughs> she's in the right neighborhood. Right neighborhood, yeah. and then also starting and ending the day with goodies, you know, like... Yeah. But you don't even touch the treats, so... This is the first year we're not doing that, but it's okay. We're going to have some fun, and then yeah. we're going to do our midnight special. And, and we'll have candy. Night. We'll try and share it with you, but I don't think we can download candy to you guys. <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah, Animal Crossing. Yeah. Actually, I don't play. You don't? I don't. Oh, I and did. it's nothing against Animal I Crossing. Did. I, I just, just don't. ran out of time. Right, exactly. I don't have the ability to spend as much time as it demands. Hello from the Philippines. Oh, right on. Hi, in the Philippines. So I just need a little bit. Yeah, my best friend used to speak Tagalog. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I wish I knew how to say anything right off the top of my head. And yeah, I'm I... completely blanking because she tried to teach me. And I thought I knew something. And I'm blanking, sorry. Blanking, right? yeah. Well, I try to put a lot of my... Um, I add a lot of uh, subtitles in different languages to my normal videos. I can't do it to the live streams. Uh, and so hopefully, uh, if you ever turn the, the subtitles on right now, it seems like it doesn't matter to you. Uh, hopefully that though, that works out. I've always kind of wondered because it's a machine translation. I mean, we, we, we try hard to make sure that the English version of the subtitles, because we type those in ourselves, um, and we try to keep all the, the sentences in one, one thing so it's a complete thought so the machine can translate it well enough. But it does it to a bunch of different languages. And it's not the Google one, it's a different one that seems to work better. 
but oh, I kind of speak English only, sort Kelly of. King says, hi, Odin. I'm currently working on a Predator cosplay, and your videos give me the inspiration to do so. Oh, sweet. Yes. Thank you. Make cool shit. Make, yeah, make cool shit, please. That's great. Um, that's awesome. I'd love to see your Predator cosplay. I haven't done Predator yet. Predator and, and Xenomorph, Aliens. Those two, not necessarily verses, but just the two uh, you had creatures. had costumes at the costume shop. I, yeah. Keep making cool stuff. Keep I making really cool stuff. Genuinely. That is something yeah. I've kind of always wanted to do. I just never have. Right. Um, but yeah. There's still time. Oh, there's still time. Yeah. I've talked about doing Predator parts many times. Hi from Galt, wherever that is. Isn't that just up 99? Yeah, Galt is like <laughs> maybe 40 minutes south of here. <laughs> Hey Galt, I was going to be going to the uh, oh the, the Great Festival, right? Is that what it is? The Great Vessels in Galt, right? Uh, I was I was scheduled to to go to that and be a guest there, but um, 2020 happened. 2020 happened, and that kind of fell through. Because thanks, 2020. Um, okay, yeah, I cut that way oversized, but that's all right. Yeah. Uh, I want to go this way, which is going to be fun because. Now I'm, well, whatever, who cares about the... I'm just trying to cut out the bicep bump pieces. Hey, Odin, have you played Among Us or do you not play video games? No, I totally play Among Us. Um, the orange suit I made for myself and when I play Among Us, whenever I can, I'm wearing the orange suit and my name in the game is Odin Makes. So, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't hide it. Yeah, I totally play Among Us. And I do play video games. I don't, I don't consider myself a gamer. I don't spend uh, a lot of times playing video games, and I don't play a lot of the new games because I'm busy making stuff. Uh, nothing against it. I love the way, I love the art is the way to put it. And I, and I enjoy a lot of the games and a lot of the, the new generation console games because I love the art. I just don't invest the time into it. I play Portal. <laughs> I play Among Us. Uh, I, I will turn on uh, a, uh, a cheat mode for Civ 5, not even 6, where I can do custom setup so I can just eliminate my threats and just build, because that's all I really want to do in Civ 5. Is I, lo I love the aspect of building, go figure. So yeah, no, I play. Hey, Odin, I love your creations and videos. Keep it up. Thank you. I plan to. Third time I ask, because I really want to show you, can you please DM a picture of your Star Trek ship I made in Robot Blocks video game? I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> he made a Starfleet ship from Robo, uh, Roblox. Yeah. 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 I have a friend who's always playing Banana on Roblox. I don't know Banana. It's where it's like hide and go seek, except for there's a killer banana. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, no, that, that, that's all I know. That's all you know. It's banana. Come banana. On. Double checking. Um, yep, okay. Odin, what's the best Avengers prop that you've ever made? Oh, Avengers prop. I heard, I heard Adventures prop. Avengers. Best Avengers prop I ever made. I had to pick one of the Avengers props. I made a few. Okay, so how how specific do we want to be here? This is this is uh, not a member of the Avengers from some other movie, but specifically a prop from the Avengers. Um, how about Captain America's shield that's broken? So I made Captain America's shield, but then I uh, made another it. video where I broke that shield, and I got some really good reactions out of it. And it was fun to do because it was such a such a quick, almost throwaway video. You just took the prop shield, stuck it in the vise right off the camera over here, took a jigsaw to it, and just cut it. <laughs> I actually vaguely remember you doing that. Wasn't like, yeah. Thorkules doing it? Yep, with you? yep. Thorkules is helping me do that, and so was Mick Thor. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I had two Thor cosplayers here with me while Odin cut up. Captain America's oh, shield. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if, if, if that's, is that, is, do I want to make that my final answer? You know, I think I do. Because I've got some props that look a lot better. I've done some, some props that have a, a far more accuracy. But as far as fun, that one was fun. <laughs> I know, but you never expect it. Yep. Okay, with all the mask mandates, would it be easy to have a Cobra convention? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cobra is the, the bad guy from, uh, yeah, the bad guy organization from G.I. Joe, and they're all wearing masks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
the problem is convincing uh, your, your your local uh, governments that 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 you know. The swap meet that I went to up in, in Placer County, uh, Placer County is doing really well. They're allowing swap meets, but not conventions. So it's kind of a weird gray line to, to do because I just went to one, it was yesterday. Uh, the aisles, because it's still inside, it's a new facility they had built, but the aisles are almost triple size compared to a normal convention, right? They're like 25 feet wide, just the aisle. And then That's nice. instead of tables being butted up against each other, like they usually do in vendor halls, you've got a six foot table eight foot of space, six foot table, eight foot of space. So they did a really good job to, to spread everything out. And then the attendance wasn't, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And the attendance was pretty decent. Um, they, they tried to minimize attendance a little bit. And of course they have one in and one out and, and then there's more stuff outside. Um, uh, but a lot of the con things that they typically do don't happen. There's no contests, there's no panels. Um, there's no uh, viewing rooms. There's there's no gaming rooms. None of that really happens. Is a swap meet. It's really just a swap meet. Okay. Uh, but they happen to have a couple of the Power Rangers and some vo voice actors there. Ooh. So they had a couple of uh, uh, My Hero Academia voice actors. There, doesn't like the Green Ranger or was it the Blue Ranger own a pizza shop up in Roseville? You know I don't know. That's kind of cool. Like because I heard that and I got excited and I wanted to go eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. No, the Red Ranger was there. The original Red Ranger oh, okay. was there. And I don't remember the other guy. There was another Ranger there. There's lots of there, there, there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a comic book artist, and there was a storyboard artist for Nick Toons. Ranger was always my favorite, but, you know, I always loved Kimberly. He yeah. could not. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello, guys. From Manchester, UK. Love oh, right your work. Thank you. Banana. Someone banana. banana. Oh, right on. <laughs> I, 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 that one is funny to me. <laughs> That's cool. I have yet to visit the UK and I want to. I've always, always wanted to. Hey, Odin, how's the weather in Sacramento? Actually, I can just look it up. Okay. Well, go ahead and look it up. Surprisingly cold today. <laughs> it's, it's a bit cold today. We've had reasonable summer weather until today. Uh, it's now got a nice, cold. it was kind of cold yesterday. yesterday. We've got a nice, Fairly strong northern wind today, so it's it's, it's kind of cold. Yeah, it's, it's but it's Sacramento sun. cold. It's like yeah. wear full length pants and put on a hoodie. Yeah, I it's got, that kind of cold. I got a hoodie on. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. um, the great festival is in Lodi. Dalton it is a great festival. Just okay. That has the world famous flea market with the mini donuts. Is that guy still there? I don't know. But there's a guy at the Galt, and he has the mini donuts. Okay. Anyways. They're good. So I was supposed to, because the person who puts on Stockton Con puts on the, the Grape Festival, I was supposed to go to the Grape Festival or the, or the Grape, there's a Grape Con, Grape yeah. City Con. I've been to the Banana Festival. And yeah, but everything got canceled. I know. I had like three or four different appearances I was going to do with, with that guy and uh, yep, it happened. Yeah. Gotta love all those agricultural festivals. Yeah. There's the Great Festival. I did the Banana Festival. We did a whole fashion show for the Banana Festival. That oh, that's cool. That was fun. I got a whole banana themed tutu with like Andy Warhol inspired. Anyway. <laughs> um, let's see. How are you, Odin? Doing pretty good. Thank you. What exactly is a swap meet for folks outside of America? Ah, excellent. Um, open air market. Open air market. Uh, what is it? It's, it's not a. It's not a. Ah, uh, it's not a boot sale. It's not a. When when it, 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 there's individual there's, contractors come and have booths set up. And right, but there's a British term for selling out of the trunk of your car, but that's the boot of your vehicle, and there's it's like a, it's like a boot sale or something. I've heard it. I've heard it in shows. The more you know. Yeah, uh, basically it's individual people who, who can just rent a table for the afternoon and bring their specific wares, whether it is a, uh, like, like a thrift shop, yard sale, garage sale, uh, uh, ru um, rum rummage sale type of a thing, or an individual artist who's able to set up the stuff that they've handmade to, to sell. And there's people that uh, go out and, um, like one of the guys I visit, he frequents Japan specifically to get older uh, kits and older toys you can't find anymore and brings the oddball older stuff back that isn't the normal things that is uh, gray imported. Uh, gray being uh, not quite black market, not quite, you know, appropriately through channels, it's just, but anyway. So, yeah. yeah. 
So the flea market, swap meet, um, what else do they call them? Right. Well, yeah, but you're, you're, not, you're not describing a swap meet by calling it a swap meet for someone who doesn't know what a swap no, meet is. No, I know. I but, was just yeah. trying to think of all the different things that we randomly call those things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, flea market, junk sale, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I, hi, Odin Makes. I want to make a Voltron helmet, but my head size is a bit non-standard. Okay. How do I manually size up a helmet pattern? Um, Add seam allowance. Well, yeah. Uh, okay, so do you have the Voltron helmet pattern? Because I know there's a couple of people that have them out there. I, I think Ted's got one. Um, hopefully the helmet pattern has a, this is the size it's built for. Uh, I try to do that with my, my helmet patterns because I've got a fairly large head. Uh, what I end up doing on my patterns is I'll measure around my head, which is like 24 and a quarter or something. And, um, and then let you know that's what it is. So if you were to measure around your head at the same spot, you see what the difference is, divide the smaller number by the larger number, and then you get that, which will give you a decimal number, right? Because that's how many times it works. Um, and that's the percentage that you'd print the pattern out from, from, the, from your computer. So if, uh, you know, if my head ends up being you know 24 or something and your head's 23 or something and it ends up being 0.88, well, that's 88%. And so you just printed it at 88% and it should fit. And that's, that's what I've been telling people and I've seen a lot of success using that method. That's good to know. Yeah. Now, using someone else's pattern where they don't tell you the starting point, you might be making a couple of them, which is not fun. But um, if you have to experiment, uh, definitely use floor mat foam. Use the cheapest material you can that's close to the thickness of the material you're going to use. Uh, but and nobody likes cutting it out twice. No, no, I really don't. And if you get it all put together and you realize it's a little tight, you can always just kind of slit and then stick an extra piece in right. there. Right, you do that. Uh, if, and if it isn't like a Spaceballs helmet where it's really too big. Um, and that can you, just wear a hat underneath. Right, or line it with uh, a little bit of the, the poly foam, the upholstery foam. Yeah, that's, that's it's easier really... if it's too big than if it's too small. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So, great, 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 great movie, silly thing. Uh, Roy Scheider is in a fantastic movie called Naked Lunch. This is a um, movie from the 90s. Weird, drug-induced, bizarro effects movie where uh, you have these creatures called mugwomps that produce a, a fluid. The mugwomps are kind of look like murlocs, but like, like the, the slightly taller and, and, and thinner version. Uh, but anyway... There's a, there's a big reveal at the end where the, the, one of the female antagonists does this quasi Scooby-Doo moment where she starts tearing her face off and, and removing things, but it's not gory because it's this costume that Roy Scheider's wearing. Well, the actress was considerably smaller than Roy Scheider. So in order to make it work, they did a urethane, I believe was the material casting of her head, soaked it in kerosene for four days, which made the urethane expand because it soaked up the kerosene. <laughs> so literally, in the scene, when Roy Scheider is pulling this stuff off, he is pulling off a flammable costume. I was going to say that. <laughs> like, was she intoxicated? Like, well, no, no. Well, the, the, the woman was fine. The actress was fine because she was just, you know, she was just had the life cast on. All the fun stuff happened to Roy Scheider when he had to peel the makeup off. <laughs> but it wasn't glued on and it wasn't supposed to be gory. It was just like a, a tearing up Scooby-Doo moment. Yeah. And so in order to increase the size for it to fit him, yeah, they soaked it in kerosene. Now, kerosene doesn't have a bad fume problem. You, uh, I don't think it's as good as diesel where you can almost put a cigarette out in it. But it does take a little bit to get kerosene to, 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 to burn, light. to okay. light. Yeah, as far as just I don't sitting there. Sniff kerosene on a right. regular basis, but no. I'm just imagining like this. Right, because you got the kerosene lamp that's got the wick in it, right? And you can burn the wick because it becomes this finite thing off the end of the wick. But as, as I remember, a bowl of kerosene is harder to light. You can do it, but it's harder to light. Well, now I need to go play with fire. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I liked Kimberly too. Sweet. Good. Uh, Yellow Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Kimberly was the pink ranger. Shit. Sorry. It's okay. I like the yellow for the color, but I liked Kimberly. She's the pink ranger because I was, she was a gymnast like me, and I just really related with her. Okay. Yeah. I was exactly the wrong age, so I never got into Power Rangers. <laughs> Love the Rubber Monsters because I'm a huge Rubber Monster Kaiju fan, 
But I just never actually watched the show. I would get grounded Don't hate from me. Power Rangers, and it would be like, no. <laughs> Jason was the first Red Ranger. Okay, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. If you look up uh, SACAnime.com or, or, or SACCon uh, Swap Meet 2020, this was the first one this year. You can, you can confirm that I've, that I've said the right trivia that Jason was the guy that was there, but I'm pretty sure it was Jason. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you ever play with the props when you get bored? All the time. Yeah, all the time. Not as often as you probably think, but no, it happens. Yeah. Um, hi, Odin. I'm such a huge fan. Hi from San Diego. Oh, sweet. Hello. We are here having a cold day, too. Really? Well, wow, San Diego's cold? They're by, no. the, they're by the beach. They're by so the they beach. Yeah, the they, yeah, that happens. We get the Delta breeze every once in a while. Right. Yeah, but this is coming from the north. You're right. <laughs> you can tell because when we go out the loading dock door, it wants to blow the door open and blow us off oh, the loading yeah, totally dock. Oh, blew me. <laughs> like, you're like, are you okay? It's kind of like it's a Mary Poppins moment where she almost came off her. She didn't. But uh, the wind, the I started to open the door and then the wind took the door and me with it. Yep, because you were smart enough not to let go. I was gonna go flying. <laughs> uh, and I only say smart enough because we have the people in the. So I'm in a studio. For those of you who weren't here earlier, I, I rent space in a working studio, and we have somebody shooting in the green screen today, doing uh, testimonials for whatever video they're doing. Right. So the loading dock isn't far from where the green screen shooting. So if you make a big banging noise, it can totally ruin their take. And a testimonial is somebody who's up there emotionally trying to tell their story, which may not be as simple as, yeah, try the red one because it's great. You know, it's, there's more to it. So yeah, thank you for not letting go of the door. <laughs> <laughs> California and the weather doesn't always go by seasons. Yeah, no. No. But yeah. Uh, what is it? California has uh, a little bit of winter, a little bit of spring. Well, we're an about hour from everything. six months of summer. <laughs> well, Sacramento is a little different because right. we can go visit the snow, we can visit the beach, right. we can visit the does we can visit all of those things and then just come back to and just come back to it. But yeah. but our our yeah we. There's not snow here. There's not snow here. There's not, not that huge of a change. It gets colder. It rains. Uh, and now in, in, in the peak of summer, we have fire season. That's a whole new season yeah. to have. But, so, um, yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. We had four inches of snow yesterday in the northwest Iowa. Yep, I believe that. I do not accept Sacramento cold. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, we are toasty compared to y'all. Yeah, no, totally. I would never want to say that we are cold anyone no, else. No, I'm just feeling chilly and cold because I'm a big baby and. Yeah, I'm still standing here in shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, the coldest it gets in Sacramento, I put on a hoodie. That's it. It's not cold. It's not. But it is as far as being describing a hot, which is triple digit in Sacramento, and cold, which is, yeah, I don't know, sometimes it gets all, all the way down into the 30s. You know, it's, it's that much of a change. It feels cold to the people that are used to it. So. Avoid us in the UK. We are crazy. This is just general? That was Adam Bryant because you said you wanted to go to see you. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's okay. We're crazy here, too. You're telling this to someone from America? America. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> hello from Idaho. All right, hello, Idaho. Okay, I think I'm doing pretty good here. Do you have any here. tips for rust effect on metal? Are we doing real metal or are we doing a foam to look like metal? Right, rust effect on metal? I came in at the very tail end of a project when I was working at Play Incorporated where they took a bunch of steel walls they were using for uh, their trade show booth, and they had to apply a rust to it. And they're just going to do it real rust because it was steel. Metal and it'll rust. They bought stainless for some reason. Oh, lovely. So they had to soak the stuff in rock salt and, and water in order to get it to rust up, and that it did. Sense, it yeah. totally worked. It looked like a sunken ship. And so they took, out, took that out to the next uh, trade show, right? So you got conventions, which, which you know, anyone who's been to a comic convention or, or, or con knows what con is. A trade show 
is the same thing, but instead of selling wares, the, the, the vendors are showing off their new, te new technology or new ways to do something. So the National Association of Broadcasters, or NAB, has a huge trade show every spring in Vegas. So Flay goes to this thing with their new rusted panels, not thinking about the fact that all the guys are walking around in their nice three-piece suits and they're going to rub up against the walls. They ruined a lot of suits because the rust came off. So I came in when they were having to put a sealer over the rust to keep it attached to the stainless steel panels. So when people walked by, yeah. And the other thing they didn't bother to think about as a company is you pay per pound to have stuff brought into a trade show. It's called drayage. It's yeah. what the unions do. So they actually weigh the semi-truck, you unload the semi-truck, and then they weigh it again, and whatever the difference is, they charge you that per pound to drag your crap into the, into the uh, convention hall. Yeah. Play blew a million dollars under edge because they had uh, the steel. The yeah. yeah. It's like, why are you guys There's burning through so, so much money? Yeah. <laughs> so many and this is mid 90s, late 90s million dollar. Yeah. They do that to cars, though, give them that like nice rusted patina. Yeah. And then also they have the. All right. the yeah, do you want to get back on track with the real way how to do it? Oh, yeah. How do you do it for real? <laughs> Uh, I do a lot of my rust with uh, acrylic paint, right? Orange. So, yeah, orange. If you look at rust, it's got about three primary colors. Basic colors, primary is wrong way the term to use for color. High light, low light, and a base color. Exactly. You got the base color of, of a really dark, earthy brown. You got a medium, like creamed coffee brown that's tinging towards orange. And then I usually literally just orange on top of it just yeah. just uh Even and i'm doing this with neon a, orange is yeah. too much because you want it to just be that little highlight of color exactly and 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 i'll do a lot of with sponging so you take a like a like a sink sponge or a piece of uh, upholstery foam and tear it and the more roughed up and ugly the sponge is the better effects it gives totally because it's all about the texture which is the next thing that's important i've done an extreme thing where i've taken bondo and a, and a paintbrush and mashed it on in order to get the spiky, lumpy, super texture over ABS pipe to make it look like rusty steam pipe. And that totally worked, but it's a lot of work. What she's done is the uh, same thing but that you would do for clotted bud and add instant coffee or coffee yeah, grounds to it. That. Yeah, and so you can add that or, in, into the paint in order to make it be uh, uh, lumpy. Um, and, and it's still, you know, kind of safe to use. You could use sand, you could use whatever, but you so add texture, a medium to it. You have your highlights, your lowlights, and your midtones. Yeah. And you really try and gunk it up and don't be even. The more pretty and perfect it is, the less it's rusty. Yep, exactly. And think about where the natural damage would happen on it. Like seams, like leaky spots, go, like, right. keep adding. Sometimes keep. you think it's not quite enough, just keep going and it, the more, cons oh, more inconsistent, cons more consistent the inconsistent sees, the more people will believe the lie. Exactly. If that makes any weird sense. Right. I've got a rusty axe, but I need a ladder to get to it. Oh yeah, it's over um, there. The other thing is, like she's saying, I'm, I've got something sitting on the table and I'm painting on it. You got to think about when you're wearing it and it gets wet, the water's going to collect low. So that's where you want to have the bad rust spots. Those of you that live in the north area where they put salt on the road, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For all of us that don't, the thing you want to do is have the, <laughs> because that's, you know, water's going to flow and it's going to collect and where the water's collecting is where it's going to rust. And also where you naturally have damage of your costume or prop where you right. use it is more likely of a damaged part of the prop that would naturally happen. So emphasize it. There you go. Yeah, the wear places, the places where you're, uh, if the prop has a finish and the finish has been worn off, that's where the rust is going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Just think about how things will be used and then just try and follow those lines. Don't just go, well, it'd be pretty if it had rust right here. But, which, and it could be. Which works and can happen, but. Go for it. But, yeah. But just. Uh, I've also done full faux, faux rusty walls for, uh, actually, inside of a building just to make the building look that way and urban urban and the two things we did was the sponge so we took huge sponges with uh what i don't know if we use sand or we use coffee grounds but we mix something in with it and did the texture. spongy pattern for the texture and then once that was all on there we came back with those uh bug and garden sprayers right so yeah, you go to the hardware store 
you get the mist. Yeah, it, it's it's just a, a plastic bottle that you pump up and spray, and you spray your water or fertilizer, or whatever you want to use. We, we fill it up with watered down rust paint and just spray the wall down and let it all run and drip. Look great. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. We're never going to get this done. No, we are totally not. <laughs> but you know what? I'm having a blast. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Well, all of our pieces are done. They just need to be riveted together. Okay. I just haven't stuck the rivets in because I probably should look at a reference photo before I oh, come right. to any of this. Well, you're, you're, you've got the helm. Go I ahead. I know, and... <laughs> but I'm answering people's questions every time I look over there. It's All right, that's fine. For Geralt pictures. Um, okay, so I'll go I'm ahead. working on Doctor Doom. A lot of started projects, Red Guardian, is to be finished next. I know the feeling. So, yeah, Lots totally know the feeling. Project. So I stuck my foot in my mouth earlier because I couldn't remember what country Dr. Doom is from. What country does Dr. Doom uh, rule over, right? It's a fictitious company in the, in the comics. And I think it's the country that um, uh, Avengers of Age of Ultron uh, happened in. But I can't remember it. Could you remind me, please? <laughs> Where to send you pictures? Insta, right? If they want yeah. to send you pictures. Insta's, Insta's probably the easiest, yeah. If you're yeah. just on Instagram, which is Odin Makes on Instagram, that would totally be good for sending pictures. You can send it to my email, which is Odin at OdinMakes.com. Um, but he'll but, get a little ding on his phone if you well, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. I'll, I'll try and pay attention to my phone. Yeah. Um, do you have tips for rust effects on metal? You just did that. And then Trip the next it. person says, kerosene smells a lot like tea tree oil, I think. Kind of. I think kerosene, like, uh, I think it has an odorant added to it, like propane does, because propane is odorless. So mm -hmm. they add an odorant to it so you can tell when if propane's leaking. Yeah, if you're um, being intoxicated. Yeah. It's just can like, you get intoxicated from kerosene? I don't know. Oh, I don't I've, know never, I've never colors. tried. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with drinking the stuff you get from the store. I don't need to experiment. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. And I think kerosene is colored too, right? They, they specifically add the colorant to kerosene so you can tell visually that it's kerosene over gasoline, And I think. Mm -hmm. they, they do stuff like that to try and keep stuff consistent and safe. I know um, farm fuel, uh, which has a, uh, something, you used to have a hunk of kerosene, it may not be more, but farm fuel is, uh, as a gasoline, is, is, is reddish in color from what I remember. Yeah. You know what's really cool about kerosene? Hmm. It'll take lipstick out of um, clothing. Like, really? I had um, this lovely red lipstick go through the dryer with my favorite t-shirt. Right. And, you know, I don't know how this is going to get out. You know, felt snapped at all these other things, not kerosene. Interesting. Works amazing, like it, nobody's it just, business. It just broke down whatever it the took lipstick it was. Right out, threw it in the washing machine, then the dryer. Don't throw it in the dryer if it's just kerosene. <laughs> <laughs> but kerosene works as a dry cleaning fluid, and it got the lipstick right out. Wow. Okay. Baby blue shirt, red lipstick. Gone. Gone. Nice. So, and it didn't hurt the the fabric otherwise. No, okay. Not at all. I was surprised. I got that actually out of one of my grandma's old church cookbooks that have these random recipes of how to get stains out and things, you know? Uh-huh. My, my mom pulled it out. She was like, oh, look, there's <laughs> a thing. Oh, and that's what I think of when I think of kerosene, getting red lipstick out of Okay. Um, Trey Odin, that was a cool video on Wednesday. Thank you. The, the ash hand, that was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Hey, look. What yep. Oh, that's at? awesome. The Roblox ship. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I don't have a camera that can zoom in this close right now, but to describe as Roblox ships, it's very similar to the Avengers class uh, vessel, which was a reliant from Star Trek II, or the California class vessel, which is uh, what the USS, um, wow. So, wow, I can't remember the name of the ship. It's the one from Lower Decks. I want to say Citrion you were Sirius, a quiz but anyway. today, and you are not prepared. Nope, I'm not. But the nacelles are on the top, so it's kind of cool. You got you got a you got a saucer section with the nacelles on the top, and and it looks like the uh, photon torpedo uh, bridge, like kind of like the like the uh, Avengers class of Reliant has the spoiler of the photon on top. It's got that connecting the two of them. Yeah. Could be the deflector dish, but it looks like the photons. That's cool. 
Logan Dark Horse says, Hello, Odin and Felicia. This channel has inspired me to start my own company making D&D cosplay stuff. So thank you both. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That is really awesome. Yeah, no, I feel like there's a lot of stuff in that D&D market, just from the boards to the things people bring to each session. Right. Yeah, uh, and well, costumes get people into character, like nobody's business. And props also help, And there's too. plenty of people that uh, LARP. Yes. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, we did a... Um, Student film on LARPing. Okay. Yeah, and it was so much fun. I, I really like it. Cool. I like people who play dress up. Y'all <laughs> are cool, okay? Different, it's a different breed of people. I it's think. a different breed of people to, yeah. Yeah. Um, regarding Power Rangers and the silver alien bad guys. Was oh, the putty, right? you supposed to notice the zipper on their costumes, or is it a mistake? Some goes for other monsters in that series. It's a costume. Like, I went as a putty one year. I did. Right. I dressed up in gray sweats. Mm -hmm. I was comfortable, but I was with a friend who was dressed up as the Pink Power Ranger, and right. he needed somebody to beat up. So, the putties are just the thing that they beat up. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the zippers. You can see the stupid things. I like them. I'm going to guess in context of the show, they're not supposed to be people in costumes. Because no, they're they, supposed then you have to a be kid mud. shoe. Yeah. They're supposed to be mud. Because it's a kid show with somebody kicking somebody. You don't want to be kicking people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just like it's okay for Bender and Futurama to smoke and drink on screen because he's not human. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, what she's saying is just a costume. So Ultraman, right? Uh, another uh, giant kaiju, sort of. But he's he's in a silver uh, suit with with red chevrons on it, and, and and a stylized bug helmet, sort of bug-eyed helmet. It's not a bug helmet; it's a humanoid. Anyway, yeah. On occasion, you can see the the zipper down his back. And I had a friend that got a one-third scale, so two-foot-tall vinyl model kit of the the '70s Ultraman, his favorite. They sculpted the zipper into the model. It was really cool. <laughs> those details, those just finishing touches. But then sometimes you yeah. have to think, you know, what does this putty do on his time off? Like, does he just, you know, how does hey. he get in and out? Does he take baths? He is a mud creature. He's a mud creature. He just hangs out in his puddle. Yeah, right? He was just perfectly fine being some dirt, being walked yeah. all over, and then he gets up and he gets stomped back down. <laughs> exactly. Stomped back into the dirt. Which is kind of like sending him home? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I've we watched so cover, little Power Rangers. We can cover all four seasons in one day here in North Carolina. Yes, you can. <laughs> so my favorite place that I got to visit that we talked about seasons had to have been Martha's Vineyard. We went up to uh, Martha's Vineyard off of Cape Cod, and um, it, was, it, was a, it was a family gathering for, for Thanksgiving. And we're in a restaurant, and the waitress is like, oh, it's nice to see you folks come on up here during the off season. Because, you know, we only have two seasons here in Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, we have winter and August. Winter and August. <laughs> I like August. Yeah. Okay. Um, where do I find you on Insta? That's Odin Makes. Yeah, just Odin Makes at at Odin Makes, and this is at Ish eighty seven, which is E E S H underscore eight seven. She might be changing it to something less, having to be explained less. But uh, yeah. Jared's gonna hop onto Evans. Adam Savage's stream right now. Have Please fun. do. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I will be watching the the the, the Avid Savage saves the recorded version later. Yeah, I will never take offense if you're going to hop on the Savage's stream. <laughs> yeah. um, hey Felicia, can you still do a back handspring and stick the landing? Pre-COVID, yes. I have not, tried, <laughs> like, I have not been into the gym since like March. Okay. 2020. So yeah, yeah okay. So but. I can as of then, but I have not, so. But yes, I was a gymnastics coach for 15 years. And not that I ever took that good a care of physical uh, shape for myself, but I've gained some COVID weight. That's, hap that, that, that's happened. You got comfy during COVID? Uh, apparently, yeah. UK has two seasons, spring and autumn. Sometimes we get tourist visits from summer and winter. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's about three good weeks of spring in Sacramento. Is there anyone who actually has like all four seasons, not in one day? With the... Yeah, I don't know. I would hope so. Well, you know, you've got the equator where it's always summer and then you go geography, right? right? Geography. So it's gotta be, yeah. Okay, it's been lashing rain all day here in Ireland. 
that sounds like Ireland. <laughs> uh, lashing rain. So, was it? Yeah, because I. You got multiple ways of describing it. So my wife has visited, has visited Ireland and talked about Irish rain and 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 such. So yeah, I don't know. From what I understand, there's 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 multiple ways of describing it. Anyway. Yeah. BTW, hey from Denmark, and I'm Malaysia, and hey Odin from Huntsville, Alabama. That is well, hello. quite some diversity. Quite some diversity. Yeah. Well, hello there, back to uh, all over the world. all over the world. I've 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 driven through Alabama briefly. Really? Yep. Uh, working with uh, Beyond Geek, okay. we went out there to go visit a guy that does uh, Star Trek fan films out of his boathouse. So he's got a a, a bridge starship, star, the bridge to a starship built in his boathouse that has a, a transporter room in the back and a little captain's quarter in the front. And the captain's quarter set is so small he has to open up the garage door and the cameras are outside and the actors are in like this two foot deep set. But you frame it right and it looks fine. And yeah, that Most was... sets, right? Yeah. Wow. Well, su super low budget, done for the love of it, has done it for years. The stuff actually looks great. Does it look like, you know, televised Star Trek? Well, no, but what he's what he's done for 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 a, for a hobby production is freaking amazing <laughs> craig holdman run runciman oh well sorry about butching your name wait he craig said, craig what holden oh okay Benjamin. you guys are always welcome in the uk this is this american has been here for 10 years so come on over lol <laughs> right on thank you craig i'd love to i Briefly got invited once to a maker fair that was going to happen outside of Manchester. And um, uh, KVIE wouldn't give me the time off. Oh. Yeah. Aren't you glad you're not there anymore? Yes. <laughs> but now it's 2020. So. But now it's 2020. Yeah. Not the year for travel. No. But that would have been awesome because they invited me to come out. It was going to give me a space because as a YouTube maker, I was going to, get, going to get to go to a show with Colin Furs. I mean, that was going to be freaking great, right? <laughs> That was, there was a whole ton of people going, but you know that was that was the yeah that would have been awesome. Got my passport ready though, but oh, it just wow. ended up not happening. Yeah. I think you know, plane ticket and me being able to come up with the money for that was a problem as well. But it stems from uh, I wasn't going to be given the time off. Yeah. Cool. Starius is in. Right on. Thank you, Starius. I appreciate the moderator help. So how are we doing? I'm waiting for glue to dry. I'm sniffing glue. Yeah. All right. I'm let just me. Just avoiding not doing these. <laughs> All right. Because I kind of want to do this. After? On, yeah, I kind of want to place it okay. on the clamshell. Well, 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 glue is drying, and, and we're not talking to Starius and Craig in, in Alabama and, and Norway. People, um, what you've got going on here? Do you want to hit number four? Number four? I'll slide it and lose it. Yeah, they're just the little rivets that we have, just trying to see where. I don't know if it's on both sides, but I have to look at the picture. Right, I'm the fan. I'm the fan of symmetry, so I, I think it is. I know, but I don't know how symmetrical he is because he only has it on. Yeah. Yeah, he's only got this this I, detail on, on the right shoulder, but these are about 15 millimeters in diameter. It's a hemisphere uh, metal rivet, and it's got a, a spot in the back where we can put in a very small screw. So it's got a, a very flat screw to to attach the the rivets. And this is what we wanted to use for the rivet detail that goes on his shoulder armor. Okay. Yes, there is a front one, a back one, and the three. So the, it is even. It is even? One. Okay. Yeah. And it's only on the shoulder that has the chevron. Okay. It's not yeah. on both sides. Okay. The other one I was planning, see he has, I was planning on using the invisible, not invisible, but the less visible. The smaller rivet, ones? These rivets. Right. That kind of. Can be oh, okay. In there to attach, but... Right. Well, these are also the, uh, the the like mushroom studs. These are for uh, belts and straps. Yeah, they're right? like so little can... cufflinks or buttons. Yeah. So but... you just kind of pop it over. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Whatever you want to use, I don't care. Yeah, but those will be the ones because I feel like they'll hide a little better. But for okay. this guy, I wanted the big shiny ones because they're part of. Yeah. The... And then these are just those basic hammer flat rivets. Do we need a special tool to put these rivets in? These ones? Yeah. No, I don't think so because it, it, just it, the screw it appears it's just it's just kind of flat you screw that all? goes in the back. I don't know where your awl is. I know where my awl is at home. No, I don't have an actual awl. I'm sure I've got a pointy thing. You want to hit one? I'm sure I've got a pointy thing that uh, we can make a hole with or we can just drill a hole. But if you want an, oh, yeah, an actual awl that, that's going to punch through it. Yep. 
a drill with hole makes more sense. It makes sense. I'm just used okay. to. <laughs> sure. Uh, I have uh, leather punches. I've got the you know the little little thing that sets into a holder that you can. What's easily going to poke a hole for that? What's well, this, the easiest this is, way? This off? is foam. We'll probably use the leather punch, which okay. is. Um, so an awl is a type of a leather punch. It looks like a, 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 a pokey stick. Yeah, it's it's an ice pick on steroids. If you know what an ice pick is, most of us that have you know automatic ice makers have no idea what an ice pick is. Well, but it's you know it's 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 a kind of a rounded wooden handle with with a spike that comes out of it. And that an all like really scary and dangerous. But the one I have is like tiny. It looks yeah. like a screwdriver at the end. And instead of having a cross blade or a flat screwdriver, it has a poke. Yeah. So you use that to stab holes. Exactly, and it's totally a leather working tool. So a leather punch. What I have is uh, this, and you've got the little rounded. This, this shows up so well, so small away, right? There you go. So, um, so you've got the anyway. It's it's sharp and it's hollow, and the two parts will screw together. And then when you're doing leather, you end up having to set the leather down. You put this on it and you use a hammer to hammer through it, but with foam. I can don't just have don't have to it, and it it takes a small bit out, and we could easily use this to make the holes yeah. for. And it's gonna be fine on the vinyl. Yeah, it'll yeah. be fine on the vinyl. Yeah, this I. I I'm just saying it out loud because I, I I, I, vinyl are two different creatures. They're very similar, and they want to be the same thing, but right. they're different. They are Sometimes different. The strings get in the way in the vinyls. Oh, okay. And it doesn't necessarily make a nice clean cut. Right. Now I think I've been okay. Sense, but I think that'll be fine. Here's a small bit of plywood I just popped out of it. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, because you're hitting it with a hammer, right? Yeah. You're I mean, I do this with my hand because it's foam, but ideally you smack it. You see how yeah, no, ruined the end is. Yeah. I totally used to <laughs> do that at the costume shop. Just, I'm sure. Yeah. But I'll let you totally stab those. Okay. Do you want me but to stab those now or later? I don't care. I just don't want it. Yeah. Okay. We'll stab them later when we're ready to, uh, to Attach put them on. Attach it and be a little more ready for that. Be more ready for that, yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of leather work, do you hand me one of the patches or those patches? Oh, yeah. So at the swap meet yesterday, uh, let me get her name. An artist came over from the state of Nevada. This was the uh, Golden Gear. What she's doing is actually doing full color prints onto, uh, onto leather and making leather patches. So you want to do number three again? Number three. So uh, I've got Yo-Yo Dime Propulsion Systems. This is probably really hard to see. I'd love to do this, but I didn't focus it that way. That's what I really needed to do. Can I do that? Let me just be a horrible camera guy here. Thank you for uh, focus assist. There we are. And that'll pop out. So I've got Yo-Yo Dime Propulsion Systems, right? This is the, uh, the evil lectoids from uh, Buckaroo Bonsai. That's it. But what this is is a full color uh, prints onto thin leather that is then laser cut. And so with the laser cutting, it's easy to put all those stitch marks in because you're not having to do it by hand. And so there's that. And then I got this patch, which is the, the blue blazers, which is the buckaroo bonsai. Uh, and she says she's done this one as a huge uh, patch for the back of a leather jacket. And then um, because I love old 80s films, this is the company from the movie Outland, which is sort of an offshoot of Alien. It was supposed to be kind of in the same universe, but since it was an MGM movie, they didn't have the, the, the rights to do anything Alien or Wailing Yutani, so there was Conam. Anyway, there was a, it was a mining thing. So there, uh, it's kind of a weird bridge. Conam is kind of a weird bridge between, uh, go ahead and switch whenever you want. It's kind of a weird switch between, a uh, weird combo of Blade Runner and Alien uh, because they kind of have the replicants, kind of, but, but they're not, and they're kind of the corporation of, of Alien, but it's not because they couldn't officially link the two of them. But um, fun old 80s movie, Sean Connery, if you care. Great spacesuits. And I like the whole idea of printing on leather. Yeah. I, I like leather as a material to work with. It's right. great. And I like that they have the pre-stitching marks. Right. Go ahead and hit three again, would you? Mm. Let me go ahead and just... Shout out. Shout out to the Golden Gear. Thank you. She you says awesome. that uh, with a little bit of warning, and she's she is happy to coordinate with cosplayers to make custom stuff. And the stuff isn't expensive. So. Yay for hookups. Yay for hookups. In fact, I probably should do that again for my t-shirt people, because thank you to the Flatwood Monsters Museum for this. Yay. Yay for swag. We got high from Turkey and high from Oklahoma. High in Turkey and high from Oklahoma. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. I've I've had a number of people that enjoy wearing their their garb is is what a lot of the Renfair uh, uh, people like to call it. So I've, yeah, I know people that have to, to typically wear not yeah. mundane clothes. Yeah. yeah, I feel like cosplay is just I don't know. I feel like really creative fashion, except for it's based on other characters. Because I don't know. I feel like you can get away with. Playing dress up and wearing more outrageous things. Yep. When you're acting as a character, than as if you could wear in normal every day, but you wear those things as normal every day, people think, "Are you cosplaying?" No, I just. No, I just. I like this robe. Yeah. So there's the Flatwood Monsters. You. Oh, which one? Three. Three. Yeah. There you go. So that's the uh, the Flatwood Monster. Yeah, that's that's the actual monster, right? And uh, Flatwood Monster Museum. So thank you, thank you again, Mr. Anderson, for sending me this stuff. Here's the resin cast statue that they sent along of the monster. My lighting is a little blown yeah. out here. That's kind of sad. But why Sorry, you're gets losing. Blown out in yeah. Sorry. So it's cool. I I love the care package a lot. Thank you. It's very cool. <laughs> Odin, you cave definitely worth a visit, but not fall for the. But do not fall for the tourist traps. Right. I, yeah. So the one time I got to visit Crete, I got to go out there with a production doing a World War II documentary. It's called The 11th Day if you want to torture yourself and go watch it. Um, actually, it's, it's better than that. Uh, because we were doing non-tourist things and we were talking to veterans uh, about World War II, I got to see a fantastic side of the country, got invited into people's homes. There was this, this family, they were up in the mountains, they were beekeepers. And so when they came in to talk to them, they brought out uh, the fresh honey that they had harvested. And then they brought out the, the white table line, wine that they had made. And then uh, to eat with the honey was some hard uh, white goat cheese. So we would actually dip this, this hard cheese, or it could have been sheep cheese, into, into the honey and just eat. Oh, it was great. And the I people like, were so freaking nice. That was great. <laughs> I like visiting the people when I travel more than anything else. I feel like when you get into people's homes and homemade food is the best yeah. when you travel. Way better than restaurant food any day of the week. There was a guy, we were there with the cameras. He had no idea what we were doing and didn't care, but he insisted that we come into his basement, right? So this, this is fun. Okay, because that sounds safe. That sounds totally safe. We're, I don't remember if we were in Hanya or, or where we were at, but uh, so we're in Crete, and we get in there, and he shows off his two olive oil urns. Olive These, oil urns. Olive oil urns, right? So it's an urn to, to, you know, to, to store olive oil in. Seven feet tall, holds more fluid than a hot tub, Two of them in his basement. <laughs> He's like, "Look at these! He's like, these are incredible! You know, these are awesome!" And he says, "Yeah." And 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 he he explains. The guy spoke really good English, far better than any. But it wasn't his first language. But still, it was a lot of fun to talk to him. He explained that they were two hundred year old. Olive urns and olive oil urns, which it's he's he's passing. No, no, they were okay. empty. No, they were empty. They were. Uh, uh, and he starts saying they're not that old. They're neat, and, and you know because. Uh, Crete is, in Greece is such an old country, they have a good concept of what old is. Where we're like... Oh, I dude, looked at him and said, so 200 years is older than my country. I get it. It's cool. <laughs> and he laughed. Very true. Yeah, when I went down to Mexico, they're like, yeah, no, this city's way older even than the United States. Yep. And I'm like, wow. There's a lot of stuff older than the United States. Oh, yeah, we are a very baby country. Okay, let's see. Finally bought Armorsmith after seeing you use it, and oh. it's been fantastic for patterns. Yes, isn't what it? Is Armorsmith? Armorsmith Designer is a uh, PC program, specifically PC. And what it does, the one that you're always... I'm always using. Okay. You can bring, it works with Pepecura files best. You bring a Pepecura file, Pepecura is papercraft, right? And a lot of people make cosplay parts out of Pepecura. You can bring that file in Armorsmith Designer and it will restructure it into a simpler pattern that you can use for foam. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the best thing with Armorsmith Designer is you can create an avatar in the program that has your body dimensions. So then you can visually size these Pepecura pieces to fit your body. I really want to sit down and play with that and see how flat patterning 
translates right. into digital patterning. Okay. I've done it on like Gerber and other more technical, like right. industrial programs, but none of it quite does what I really wanted to. So I think I got to check that. Program okay. Out. Yeah, for sure. Um, I need to get to know the program a little more. I let Joe uh, do a lot of it. I, I do some. Um, but yeah, and I've talked to the, 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 so a good friend of mine who's part of SKS Props and is uh, Steve uh, Scott Pope. Um, he knows the guy that wrote Arbor Smith Designer. So I've actually talked to, to the guy who wrote the program. And yeah, so he was, he was excited about me doing more of a, a show about it. And I, I, I have it because I don't feel I can really make it sing as a program. So. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Right, which which isn't fair to him, but I try to you drop try. the name and use it whenever so, I can. Thank you for using it. Yeah, thank you. So my glue is set up, and I'm now just taking the the under portion of the of the of the bicep for the armor, and I've got this smaller piece. The glue edge is the edge that's cut on an angle, and so I'm gluing that angle and curving it around in order to try and get this kind of a shape. We Which want to emphasize you can kind the of see muscle. the pectoral muscle. So number two might be a good the one for that. Squirrel. The pet monkey squirrel, yeah. So that's got. So you can kind of see this is this would be the outside, and this would be the center of the chest. So it would actually go on kind of this way. But um, that's what I'm doing, and the whole idea is to have this end. Can we even see that? Not really. Might be able. It might be able to on three. Three. Where I've got a, a, slight bevel. a slight bevel to it. I gotta remember this. I like having one focused tight. I never focus the cameras close when I'm doing a normal show. But anyway, so I got a slight bevel on it. And I got two layers of glue on this edge for gluing because the what the foam is has got a, a good heavy rubber content to it. So it's uh it's a much yeah, much more rugged foam. It's pretty darn sturdy. Yeah, and since I'm putting a little bit of stress on it, I've got two layers of, of glue to make sure I'm going to get a, a decent stick. Yeah. Um, are they furniture rivets? They probably are. We ordered these off Amazon. I just ordered them off Amazon. Um, Industrial, other, another crafty DIY 12 millimeter. Oh, 12. Well, it was a guess. Oh. <laughs> I said 15. I just looked at the package and go, what is How it? dare you look at the package? Yeah. I don't know if those are furniture rivets. Um, they can be used in furniture. Right, but, but there's specifically a... Um, they're not the kind of nail studs where you just nail them in. They have a back piece that yeah. they go through too. So they are a stud. Okay. So I missed the top of the hour. Uh, now that we're even past the bottom of the hour, uh, for those of you who haven't been been with us the entire two hours, just wanted to say thank you for joining our stream. Uh, I'm, I'm not signing off. I'm just letting you know who the heck we are and what we're doing. You know that you're on the Odin Makes channel, I assume. Uh, I'm Odin. Hello, how's it going? And I'm here with my friend. I'm Felicia. Nice to meet y'all. And, and what we're working on today, outside of answering questions, we're barely getting anything done, is uh, uh, Geralt's basic armor, vanilla armor from The Witcher 3. We're going to make the, uh, all the pieces that are they're actually the shirt of the armor. And I've uh, secured the rest of the costume we're going to be able to borrow from a friend. So when we get this finished, and however many sessions it takes, uh, we can then put the full cosplay onto someone else, not me, not her, a third party who's not here, and actually have a, a big final reveal of, of the costume. But as it is, we're just slowly talking to you, that's actually the more important part, and, and, and picking through working on, on the cosplay, which gives us a crafting thing to do. Now, if you haven't heard, if you weren't here earlier, the two of us are gonna be doing another live stream Halloween night. And so it's gonna be super late for most of you because we're gonna start at midnight our time, which is California time, right? So technically we're starting November 1st, but it's still Halloween night. Yeah, no, we're gonna be midnight to we're midnight. midnight. And yeah. it's daylight savings time, so we have a double midnight and we're the last midnight before. Well, yeah, almost, yes. <laughs> There's yes, a few. Yeah, Japan's the next day, right? Is, or is there... Hawaii. Um, Japan's next day, but but Hawaii. There's a few other islands that have that are still kind of and, and like hunks of, of Alaska. Yeah. I know. I feel like 
it's the last <laughs> opportunity for the werewolf to, you know. He kind of, yeah. You know, um, if something crazy's going to happen on Halloween, I feel like. Well, this Halloween's a good one for it. Yeah. It's Saturday. It's a full moon. It's the uh, second it's full moon of the month. It's a blue moon, right? It's it's daylight savings for those of us that are tortured and having to observe it. Double and so, double midnight. Double midnight. Well, yeah. double one, I think it's supposed to be, but yeah. But happen, <laughs> midnight happens twice. So we'll have a two-hour live stream that'll only take an hour to go by by your watch. So that should be a lot of fun. So join us for our time warp live stream on Halloween night. And, and if you have any questions. If you have any questions, I'm going to be setting up uh, later today. I'm going to. I'm actually committing to this. I've mentioned it before to my, my patrons. I'm going to set up a Discord room specifically for my patrons, so you guys can submit pictures of your costumes early. You guys can submit uh, questions early, and we will focus on answering uh, those those Patreon Discord questions primarily. And then we'll also pay attention to the chat room. We do not plan on crafting during this time. We'll just play with costumes and talk to you and that's going to be the whole stream yeah. so uh if you if you haven't joined my patreon go and take a look at that i'll be including the patreon uh chat room there's a there's a level that i'll be using that, that has access to that and that'll be a permanent feature on my patreon i'm setting up for this stream to start but it'll remain that way so for all future live streams um you'll be able to submit questions beforehand and we'll try to answer them or there'll, there'll come a time when i have a different guest and and and, and we'll try to answer those questions for you yeah. so you won't always be stuck with me <laughs> But it's convenient right now because she has Mondays off. Yeah. <clears throat> Yay for Mondays off. I liked it better when I had Fridays so. off. Yeah. But I'm not complaining. Could be a lot worse. No. <laughs> Permanent three-day weekends are pretty cool. Yeah. I can't even read that language. Somebody, I think that's a German. Well, I can't read it either. I don't know why I'm looking up. That's okay. That Star Trek ship I made was my own design, BTW. I oh. call it the USS Apollo, named after the craft that landed on landed man on the moon. Cool. And the design is based on USS Albatross. Albatross, okay. Albatross? Aren't those the big birds? That, Albatross are the big birds that, yeah. that will continental... Uh, I know, but aren't they a bad omen, technically? If that's, that's <sighs> um, or are they I, a good omen? I don't know if Albatross is a bad omen, it seems, but there is a maritime story called the Albatross because they killed the Albatross and hung it around the guy's neck. Yeah. I, I, but they, I don't know if there's specifically a bad omen. Yeah, I don't know. But Albatross is very cool. So it's it, you call it the Apollo. Is it the Apollo class? Or it, it's not an Olympic class, right, because they have an Olympic class. Or is it just the USS Apollo? I don't know. It's all these weird questions to ask. By the way, I, I, I'm a Star Trek nerd. I'm, I, I am a Trekkie. I'm not a Trekker. I'm a Trekkie. Why? Because I made a ton of costumes and I've made a set and I've made fan films. I'm a Trekkie, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I finished my Gundam cosplay and just wanted to say thanks for so many tips in your video. Really? Wow, you made one? <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see it. Uh, Odin makes on Instagram. Please, if you can, send me a picture. I'll share it with Next Great Gunpla. He's the, that's his Instagram handle. He's the guy in the suit that we made, Joe. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Dr. Doom was the dictator slash ruler of Laveria. 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 See, L-A-V, and, and I, I can't, yeah. Laveria. Yeah. Not, not Lavaria, but Laveria. Okay. Yes, he was definitely a dictator. He's, he is not a nice guy. Imagine that. A Doctor Doom who is not a nice guy? <laughs> oh, well. I love the Robot Chicken episode where he can take his hot mask and put it on him. But they realize it's upside down so they can peel it off his face and flip it around and put it back on him again. <laughs> well, Prime Guy 98 has to go to bed. Good oh, night. sweet dreams. Good night, Prime Guy. We're only going to be on another 20 minutes or so, so you're not missing much. Good night. Yeah. Have a great stream, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to need to dremel this a little bit. Like the yes. yes, very much so. It would yes. totally work for that. You would need more of the of, of, of some of the lines in it. and But yeah. yeah. But this is kind of what, what Geralt's armor Geralt looks like. It's very Geralt? simple, but he just has a little slight de definition for his pectoral muscles. And what I'm going to need to do... Because I hand cut it, it's, uh, let me wear my microphone. Um, I've got a little barb here, so I'm gonna need to take the Dremel and, and Dremel this down. I'm not gonna do that on camera. I mean, I can, I've 
had people not complain about it before, but uh, need to do that so the two of them can meet together. Yeah. And he doesn't have a big. There's not a center seam. There's not a center seam. It's but pretty. We're going it's to pretty be flat. Covering it in fabric, so it's good. There is no real seaming. It looks like some kind of magical. Just I have these pectorals that just sure. stick out. And yeah. yeah. So I'll need to put these together, and then there's the the middle piece down here. Yeah. Which I can add. I can I can make out a pair of these, or I can get a whole new piece. So yeah. Um, not a whole lot of progress today. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get the. The right. Center thing. Well, we we switch sides, and everything's set up on this side to sew. So we'll have to make sure that you got power and everything else, so we can switch sides. Yeah. Because we'll probably be switching sides on a fair, fairly permanent basis because of the time of year. It and depends on how cold it is in the room. <laughs> it's finally, nice and toasty. Right. Because I got the vent here. This is the only AC vent in the room, um, which blows in air that's collected from outside the room. Uh, I still technically should wear a respirator every time I use contact cement, but I do have cold air, or in this case, warm air, fresh air, hitting me in the head constantly. So um, I'm not just sucking the fumes straight in when I'm working with it. <laughs> that could explain crazy behavior. <laughs> it could. Not, not that I had any of those kind of safety precautions when I was doing the choir costumes. We were in the back of a comic shop in a 10 foot by 10 foot room with the doors closed and a gallon can just open like, Death potpourri. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. Oh, sorry, things just shifted. Sure, it's okay. I was. I'm wearing the mic and walked away from you, and all they got to hear was was blah, rulers. Blah, 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 yeah. Blah. Well, and the squeech screeching of metal rulers on pegboard. Okay. So you said, oh, cool, and then something else, and, and then, then it got the away from you. Thing shifted. Oh, and it shifted again. Okay, let me see. Well, people are saying stuff. They're Hi, supposed people. to. people. Thank you for interacting. Oh. Uh, my Gundam is on your Facebook, Odin Makers oh. page. Thank oh, you Odin Makers, excellent. Odin. Yes, Yay. absolutely. Thank you. I'll definitely go and check that out. Z Drills YT. She says, I made my own lightsaber from your lightsaber, and I think it's pretty good. Isn't it a beam saver that you made? Uh, I've made lightsabers, too. I made a beam saver for Gundam. But I thought the lightsabers were on Joe's channel. They are, but I still oh, made okay. them. Okay, yeah. yeah. You, it's still made by Odin. Yeah, it's still made by Odin, but but okay. but Joe was doing a whole episode. So I was uh, I helped Joe do Beyond Geek, his show. I, I edited uh, most of the first season. I edited uh, about half of the second season. I was cameraman. I was grip. I, I did the costumes and stuff. Waiter. Almost, yeah. <laughs> I, I cast someone's head on screen. So when he did an episode all about the Jedi and, and using lightsabers, he was also at the time trying to, trying to do a YouTube channel and didn't want me on DIY Prop Shop, I didn't have my own channel, uh, to do a lightsaber build because, yeah, yeah, he didn't want it. He, he was afraid of, of, of all the money he paid out of pocket to do his project to have it lost to something else. Yeah. So I, I made a, a gentleman's agreement with him that I wouldn't do a lightsaber build because uh, it, it all goes back to geek. And that's why I haven't done a lightsaber build on the channel. But you did a beam saber and Which, that is? Not a lightsaber and I did a dark saber. Yeah. Because it's not a lightsaber. So, you know, there you, go. <laughs> there you go. And you guys can fill in the blanks if you need the other information. Yeah. But uh, you can totally see the, the previews for that on, uh, on the Beyond Geek channel on YouTube. And the full episodes you can see on Amazon Prime, I'm pretty sure. And some of you who are in the right areas in the United States can see it on PBS. So, Jaden L., I'm a new Patreon. You mentioned at the end of Ash's Glove video. Sweet. Planning to make the Samaritan, and I wanted to make the sawed-off shotgun for Ash's cosplay. Okay. Any advice for the shotgun breaking action? I didn't make mine break. Um, I made the breaking action on the Samaritan, so that one does break, and the breaking action was all done with styrene, because it was going to be, uh, it doesn't weigh anything, right, so you might pass weapons check. Um, maybe, it's hard to bring firearms. Um, because the shotgun's just solid foam, the one that I made. The biggest mistake I made with those videos when you watch it, and I'm sure as an Evil Dead cosplayer you know this, Ash didn't cut the stock off of the shotgun. So it's not sawed off to a pistol grip like the Mad Max shotgun. It's still got a full uh, uh, stock on it. Um, yeah, past that. 
styrene or, or, or you could 3D print the braking action if you got access to a 3D printer. Um, you could do it with, with ABS. You could, uh, what else? Sintra would work, which is actually a little bit easier to work with than styrene. And Sintra you can glue together with sprinkler pipe glue from, from the hardware store. The stuff you use for PVC pipe because Sintra is foamed PVC. Um, but you're basically just making a big hinge. Right, so the, what I did in the Samaritan should work fine for the braking action on, on the shotgun. Um, obviously the look is a little different because instead of a giant revolver and the braking action is a little low. And as far as keeping it shut, I used magnets. Um, no, I didn't. I actually used a mechanical click shut on, on the Samaritan. The magnet was to hold the pin of the center of the, of the barrel of the, of the uh, cylinder where you put the four bullets because I used a, uh, a door hinge pin. For the, for the axle on that, so that attached to a magnet to keep it straight so it wouldn't go crooked. Um, probably a good magnet. We were actually just talking about using uh, a badge magnets. You can go and get magnets for name badges, right, for re retail. You can get those in, 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 in the craft aisles of whatever your favorite craft store is, uh, and they sell these, these badge magnets. That's probably, because they're a about an inch and a quarter wide or so. That's probably an okay size to hold the back of the shotgun shut because that is a really strong magnet. And it, it would be easy because you got two pieces that are made to, 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 to attract to each other. You got your metal plate and the magnets. So it's, it's less guesswork on, I've got this set and I've got this set and oh, B of this other set's offset. That's yeah. annoying. Those name tag <laughs> magnets are a good strong magnet and they're meant to hold your name tag in place like a pin right. without causing holes, so what? they're pretty strong. They're pretty strong, yeah. That's why we didn't end up using them for the hole. Right, for the hole in the Among we Us costumes. We were considering trying to use them for the Among Us costumes, and we ended up with plastic bags for that. Yeah, so yes. the, it's the initial video, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, a whole nother story. Okay. That's hey, Odin, where do you get bad. helmet visors? Uh, the helmet visors, so the, the, for, for, talk about Mandalorian helmet visors and stuff. What, yeah, um, those visors I bought are replacement grinding visors, but they're actually available in a, um, tint that's safe for, for welding. Uh, they're in a box way past the camera in the dark. Uh, they're, they're a number right five. There. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Uh, they're technically green number five. They, if you look through them, they're green. If you're outside and looking into the helmet, they look black. So don't be afraid when it says green. Um, and that's the tint number five. And what I have are the thin, they're just flat because they're supposed to fit into a face shield. They're the replacement ones. And they're polycarbonate so I can cut them with scissors. So those are the ones I I'm using. you can cut things with scissors. Yeah, it's nice. Polycarbonate is the only plastic, hard plastic you can safely cut with scissors. Um, that I know of. Safely. Safely. You can cut acrylic, but it's going to like shatter, shatter and be or give stupid. You cracks or, yeah. yeah. Um, it's eight bucks on Amazon. Yeah. You know, so, cheap. yay, he for cheapness. So, yeah. Uh, you're looking for a replacement grinding visor, a safety visor, a welding visor. I think visor, even though it's helmet visor, I think it's still the right term. Yeah, green number five, because they come in clear too. <clears throat> and you want to shell out 300 bucks, you can get one that's gold lined. Mm. Yeah, I'll pass on that. I saw a really, really good, um, there's a blacksmith character from The Mandalorian, oh. and, and she's badass. She's badass in the show. I saw a really good blacksmith Mandalorian at, at the swap meet. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I still got to see that show. I haven't, okay. I haven't seen anything, yeah. so no spoilers. Sure. No, no other spoilers. No spoilers. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a solo other character, and she's badass. <laughs> yeah, I look for strong female character, yeah. so, yay. Um... Have you, how, how you seen, okay, I didn't misread that. Have, have you, you seen? seen? It says how, but have you seen Witcher Armor from Netflix? I have questions about it for cosplay. Yes, I love it, and it's very similar. I considered doing it, but we chose this because I wanted to play a foam mail. Right. And I suggest using foam as the metal plates in it. Right. <clears throat> behind, glued behind leather, very similar to how we did the 76 guy. Yep, very similar. Very similar, just kind of, you can glue it in place, you can stitch it in place, but you can... I, what, we, what we were doing that worked really well is a little bit of uh, spray glue as a, as a means of pinning, and then stitching it after that. Yeah, I would use the kind that quilters use because it's not gonna gunk up your sewing machine, just the little right. spray. But foam behind the thing, and then just the metal. These are like little flat rivets if you really wanted to get into it and do lots of holes. 
<laughs> but they also have those little jewels that are like um, permanent, yeah. permanent stickers, rhinestone decals, you know, that you can. Right. And there's the other set. ones that, that just have the four prongs in the back. Don't those? Don't those? That can, yeah. Is there a tool that makes those set or are you? Yeah, there are specialized tools, but you can also just use a screwdriver on the back. to. Okay. Those ones will get clicked on. I was saying use the ones where you heat set them in right. because there's so many of them. Yeah. That you just kind of put them all in place and heat set time-wise, but it's what can you find? What's available? What's your budget? What's your what's your time for being able to work on it, right? Yeah, are you just going to sharpie a bunch of little silver squares everywhere? <laughs> you know. You could do that. Uh, they sell a uh, stainless steel uh, shelf paper at the hardware store. Yeah. Take a whole punch to it. Make a whole bunch of, you know, but it's going to it look gonna like... Stay? Is it going to stay? Gonna it's going to look but, like sequins, but it'll work. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a lot of different ways, but to get the quilted texture, I would use fun foam on the back of vinyl or leather. Yep. Vinyl is more humane. Leather is easier to use. It is, yep, and breathes. Uh, I've seen someone do this for Podrick's armor from Game of Thrones, which is exactly that. It, he didn't have the rivets, but it was uh, business card squares mm -hmm. sewn into a leather vest. And yeah, he went through with, uh, I don't remember which, EVA foam, had a heavy leather, a heavy vinyl interior with the foam and a light uh, vinyl top layer so the the light vinyl would stretch down and it looked great and then he went through and weathered it all when it was done it looked like vinyl but when you weather it and get rid of the shine and 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 actually do the, some of the painting to it which vinyl is not easy to paint by the way uh it looks really really good <laughs> oh, i was trying to find it but these are universals not leather needles but if you're going to sew vinyl or leather and or foam i suggest getting a vinyl a leather needle. These aren't leather needles, so there's no point in holding them up. <laughs> those aren't. Those aren't. <laughs> those aren't. Those aren't the right needles. Those are the wrong needles. Those are. Okay. These yes. are universal, right? Those okay. Those are universal <laughs> needles, and somebody put used needles back in the container, so oh. I know they're not sharp. <laughs> I would just throw this whole thing away. <laughs> Sorry. Don't. 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 Don't do that. Don't do that. If you you're replacing needle, just throw it away. Let it go. Okay. Needles are cheap. Buy a new one. Most sewing machine problems can be solved by using a fresh needle. Okay. So, anyways, if you're sewing with leather, vinyl, and foam, any of those materials, I suggest using a leather needle because a ballpoint needle is like a ballpoint pen. It's rounded so that the needle goes between the fibers and doesn't actually poke fibers. A sharp needle will poke through fibers, and a leather needle looks like kind of a... It's an awl. It's like a three-pointed, like, cutting surface. Oh, okay. So that it's like a stab diamond shape, so it cuts as it pierces, and it makes a bigger hole. So it's going to cut through vinyl and leather a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> because it's stab and cutting. So just as a person who's bought several sewing machines, lots of your problems can be solved by fresh needles. Don't put your old needles back. Okay. <laughs> In the container. <laughs> and use the right needles for the job. If you have metallic, use a metallic needle. If you're using vinyl, leather, or foam, use a leather needle. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you for my TED. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other question I saw I'll scroll by. Yes, I have seen Star Trek Continues. I've seen all the episodes, and I like the show. And I really like that. Starting with what was it, episode five? They actually had a full symphony. Not full, but they had uh, a, a community symphony that came in and recorded the original music for the episode. And I thought that was really freaking cool. So I have seen it. I do like it. And I thought they built a great set. I just wish the whole the guy in charge of it had a slightly different life course that happened to him. Uh, from what I know, that set is still, because they built it in an old dollar store. Right? Really? Yeah. So it's, and it was, it was a, a, a faithful reproduction of the original Desilu Studios Star Trek set. They had the bridge, they had med bay, they had a uh, transporter, they had a hallway, they had I the reefing room. I like it when they hire room. the person who like really appreciates the original. Right. <laughs> and you can tell yes. like when they, their love goes into it. Oh, totally. There's a ton of love went into that. It. Uh, but from what I understand, that set still exists, and they, they rent it out. They've had weddings and stuff in it. I'm sure they don't do much of it right now this year, but because uh, you know, fan films became a little bit harder to make. Uh, yeah. Paramount put some guidelines out because one of them was coming out, and it was, going, it was looking like it was going to be way, way, way better than anything Paramount put out in years. So, <laughs> so yeah, they kind of kibosh on that. So this person's asking, do you know how to attach the shoulder armor to the torso armor? I have difficulties with it. There are lots and lots and lots of ways to do that, and I've been thinking of a million of them. Good. We haven't decided 
officially on one. Right. But, but what were some of your ideas? Some of my ideas is you can thre thread a um, strip across the back, either vertically or horizontally, okay. that can then be hooked onto the armor itself. Right. So you're talking about taking a, a strip of like backpack strap or something, and then you could thread the belt underneath it. Okay. Yeah. So you have like an anchor point that is attached to this piece that you can then attach to that piece. Nice. Also, I have in my little thing over there, Velcro strips. Right. That are about the right size and you can, because you're not really seeing it on the shoulder, you could put the one side of the Velcro strip. I would do the scratchy side on the costume and right. the softer side on the part that comes on and off just from, you know. Yeah, from experience. From experience in general. But right. I like Velcro because you can stip, stitch it on, staple it on, glue it on, right. <laughs> stick it on, and then you can remove it and adjust it. So if it's too far forward, you can push it back and you have a lot more flexibility within your. Yeah, and that would especially work if the loop side, the soft side is a two inch and what's on your shoulder is three quarter or yes, one you inch, you have a lot of movement. Yeah. yeah. Um, in costumes where you can really have your adjustability is in the shoulders and the side seams for armor because you can always put um, a lace from the shoulders, lacing the front to the back, which gives you growing and okay. shrinking. And if you have Velcro on either side, it gives you surface to hook to. To hide. To hide. Nice. But this is me going from not making a custom armor for one person, more like this armor has to fit everybody who walks into right. the shop. So just the ability I would go for a Velcro. No, for sure. It's, it's great. And kind of what I'm leaning for on this project, all the loops, clicks, and... <laughs> Right. What we did a lot with Guar because the pieces were so heavy. Uh, I have, did not officially work for Guar. We made our own cosplay Guar costumes. Uh, the, the, the shoulder pads were leather based with uh, expanded foam cast uh, with a latex skin on top of it and then painted so that they became, they were a couple of pounds. They weren't, you know, they weren't metal heavy, but they were heavy enough. Uh, everything was like super heavy duty snaps. Yeah, you need the structure. Remember yeah. when we were breaking down this costume and I wanted to put the hook, mm -hmm. the clasp. Right. I Just, wanted to attach it directly to the shoulder pieces because right. that would be a really secure place to attach them in the front and the back and then you have these pieces that you could take on and off. But technically it was attached to the bottom piece and not that piece and right. it wouldn't have been correct. It wouldn't have been correct. He's, he's got two hooks that hold the apparently seamless chest together in the front. <laughs> yeah. Makes, those things would make more sense on this part of the armor right. than that part of the armor, but I was vetoed. But, Sorry, yeah. guys. No, it's okay. So. Even Darth Vader's got a double chain. He's got one that actually holds his, his cape on, and then he's got a decorative one that hangs down. Yeah, practicality <laughs> and then just pretty one. The right. <laughs> costumes, right? <laughs> but it's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah. It is 2 o'clock. We can we do a couple more, but we should wrap up here pretty quick. Okay, well, we totally didn't get very far. No, we totally didn't get very far, but, you know, I had a lot of fun. I did, too. Did you? Did you guys? I hope you guys had fun just talking this stuff, playing around with the cameras, trying to figure out how my streaming stuff works because I'm a creature of habit. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I do this. And then, and now I, I don't know. I don't know what happened with the first little stream. There was probably a chat window for you. I didn't see it. So that's why after a few minutes I restarted. Yeah. Willie Wil Wilkins. Oh, nice. He prefers Paramount or Sony needles to the universal ones. Interesting. Cause yes. I, what about New World needles or, or the 20th Century Fox needles? Are those any good or is it only just the, the Paramount? And <laughs> uh, Will Wilkins, so the couple of the moderators in the stream right now, Will Wilkins and Anstarius. Will Wilkins was one of the poor bastards that worked with me at play. <laughs> and Starius was one of the viewers that watched all the goofy things we did at play. So I've known those guys a long time and thank you guys for popping in the stream today. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, I, I happen to see my old Dogma uh, uh, beta cam tape for, uh, <laughs> that you picked up from the press junket. <laughs> Saw that again uh, in, in the garage yesterday. It's probably been improperly stored. I doubt it still, uh, still plays, but I should have grabbed it. Yeah, and Jesse, I can't pronounce your last part of your name. Right. Goes, uh, I accidentally ran a leather needle through my thumb on the sewing machine. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't. Keep your fingers away from the needles. There's like this whole, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, right. 
Okay. Live streams aren't uh, meant to be productions. They're ha for having fun. Yeah, we've been having a lot of fun. Thanks, Will. And then yeah. he says, oh, oh my God, yes. Probably responding by my, my comment about working at play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So imagine uh, cosplay culture where everything is con crunch, but that's the way the corporate runs their business. Everything was a death march. Here comes that's NAB. Like every shoot? Well, that's every shoot, but this is a software company. Oh, okay. You know, which, which to some extent, I'm sure programmers out there are used to this. You get close to release date, and you've got software uh, writers who are living at their station at work. There was one guy at play. He was phenomenal. He was able to zone out on code so hard, he would forget to eat. <laughs> there, were, there were guys that uh, would come into work, and, and this guy is over there doing his code, because he's totally mentally zoned in on the flow and the language of the code, right? Doing his thing, doesn't get up, doesn't move. They would go home, they would come back. He's still doing it. They got into the habit of... Uh, Legend is, is he still there today? Legend is he's still there today. <laughs> they got into the habit of uh, um, grabbing him a sandwich. They'd bring water, they'd bring sandwich and set it down in a station next to him. And he would eat it. So they were able to take care of him that way. <laughs> Uh, the like one a, time like I ran into him, like a plant, <laughs> exactly. The one time I ran into him, Dave was uh, had the guy by the shoulders. He was walking him up and down the hallway and actually took him to the bathroom. <clears throat> the guy had the thousand yard stare. He wasn't in the hallway. He was coding in his head. He was walking around, but he wasn't there. It was like, is he all right? And Dave's like, yeah, and he explained the whole thing to me. And I was obviously impressed, blown away. Anyway, so yeah. Um, that's the, yeah. Legend is. He's Legend still is. There today. <laughs> Those types of people kind of get abused, unfortunately, by certain companies. I think play, eh, I don't know if abuse is the right word, but you get close to your deadline and it's the crunch. It's the con crunch. You got to get your costume done. You got to get your project coded right so we can ship it. And, and yeah, that at happened a lot at that company. <laughs> I was going to say, at least sometimes you have that, that time frame and after that, you're done. Yeah. And so you kind of get, but once you have that every week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's see. What are people saying before we have to go? To the <laughs> Can you get some Batman props? No, you have No, I've made a couple of Batman props. Just a couple. <laughs> I've got a, I'm just laughing at, at, at Will Wilkins. Um, <clears throat> it's okay. I would just run a truck and drive it there. <laughs> so, uh, I was part of the trade show department for play. Uh, I talked earlier about making these, these panels, but uh, they have trade shows all over the world. I didn't get to go. I got to go to the trade shows I drove the truck to. <laughs> so I got to go to Vegas a lot because we're in California. And there was one particular, one particular uh, NAB, was NAB, right? Yeah, it was NAB, because NAB happens in April, uh, first weekend of April. I drove the truck back from, from Vegas. The day I arrived back from Vegas, 12-hour drive in a Bobcat truck. They look at me and say, they've got this deal set up with the guys that are waiting in line for Star Wars in L.A. They need me to load up a U-Haul and take equipment down to them. That's an eight-hour drive from, from Sacramento. I just got back. I want to go home. <laughs> so fine. Loaded the truck, drove it down to him, and, and helped set this thing up. And then I've, I've talked about that story before. But yeah. I've done that, too. One time I got to work for Property Brothers, and part of my job was to just drive down to Southern California, pick up the tiles, and drive all the way back up to California so that it can cure in the house overnight for the next day shoot. Right. Yep. <laughs> hey, they paid me well. I got a nice comfy car that they rented for me. So oh, nice. Oh, right? good. You didn't go into U-Haul or Not anything. a Bobcat. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, no, they got me, like, the nice car, and they tried to downgrade me to, like, a smaller vehicle, and I'm like, no, I need something that I can put tiles in the back of the car. Right, yeah. And so, the person looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, no, it's it's, they, yeah. it's a heavy weight, and it needs to be dispersed. Yeah, it needs to be dispersed. It needs to have, a, the, the, yeah, the frame to hold it. Yeah, so I got a really nice <laughs> It was fine. Cool. But, That's awesome. You know, I like those those random gigs every once in a while, right? They are fun, those, those little those funky tests to get something done. Yeah. Haha, ha, been sewing for 20 years. It's the first time I've ever done that. Oh, poor person. That's oh, sewing through there. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd hate to admit, but I've sewn through a fingernail or two. I've poked myself, yeah. I've done that. Yeah, yeah not, on this, not on these machines, but. I've my fingers. Keep knocking on wood. Right. Don't. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Will Wilkins is quoting uh, uh, when we do our show. Star ISV ICQ says dot, dot, dot. <laughs> 
So I want people to correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, when we did our live streams for, for Play, this was 1998, 1999, uh, we're streaming out, right? The way we would talk to the viewers is through um, ICQ, IR, IRQ, ICQ? Uh, IRQ, ICQ chat, whichever one it was. Now I'm confused. Uh, I thought it was IRQ. What does it stand for? I'm no, no, it's, it's probably it's probably internet something or other. Obviously, it's an acronym. At this point, I believe that's what Twitch is built off of. Is that same chat client? <laughs> Interesting. I seek you. <laughs> so, Will, does Lupe ever talk to you? <laughs> Just curious. Lupe haunted us every episode. It was great. We would, so I'm talking about episodes for uh, because what, what Play did is they made uh, streaming equipment. They made they made video gear that would take standard definition video and stream it out live over the internet. Uh, over the internet? Over the internet. And um, it was able to switch like the machine I've got here that Blackmagic just put out. Uh, so you could switch between cameras. It could do character generation, which means it could do the little lower thirds like you see in the news. And it could do a uh, chroma key, so like the, the weatherman in the news. And then uh, upgraded versions had a built-in editor and stuff. So it, it, was, a, it was a TV studio in a box. Uh, it, was a, it was run on a PC, a Pentium. And um, now it's all in my phone. Oh yeah, now it's all on your phone. Uh, and 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 the the dongle that was the actual unit was 18 inches by 18 inches by 24 inches. That small? It wasn't a whole room. <laughs> it wasn't a whole room. <laughs> right. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. So it was yeah. it was fun. Um, so using this technology, I was like, what was my freaking point? Two hours a day. Uh, we, well, it was two hour blocks for 12 hours a day, five days a week. Uh, Play was having live programming go out as proof of concept, and they did it for just over two years. Oh. And I was part of that group. They did two different shows out of uh, out of our facility in Sacramento. Where at noon it was a like Kiki at midnight. She started out at midnight, but then decided it's midnight somewhere, so she started at noon. Um, and so she would do two hours, and then we'd have a two-hour break while uh, someone else ran a show externally, and then two guys in a couch would start from uh, four to six. And um, that was uh, Carl Miller and Jeff Hewitt. They went on to do a, a, a Star Trek band called Warp 11. You can still find Warp 11, so go look for them there. It's all sex, drugs, and Star Trek songs. Uh, but anyway, two hours a day. Does that sound familiar? It's what we're doing now, but I see that as a pretty common metric for, for, for people streaming. So that was a lot of fun to, to get to be part of. And Will Wilkins, I better not jump over this poor guy, he went on from 10 to midnight every night. He closed out. Every uh, every broadcast day, he had the final final slot. Okay. Yep. And so um, yeah, cool. I actually uh, got to sub in as the host for his show one week while he went on vacation. Slacker, that was fun. So oh. it was great having keys to Will's house. He wants to know why you haven't answered his emails. Oh. <laughs> actually, yes. Do you ever get my emails, by the way? Has Will have you emailed me recently? Oops, never mind. I don't know. You don't have any? Oh, I can't have I can't have this Trinity Globecaster. You sure? Starius is the one that wants your Trinity Globecaster. Um, I imagine you're teasing me because I try to keep up on my email and I haven't seen it. I haven't okay. seen the emails. But it's okay because I still have his jersey. Will Wilkins works with Kevin Smith, does some of the podcasts for him. And uh, Will got one of Kevin's IMDb uh, shirts. Because uh, Kevin was always wearing uh, hockey jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. So I have one of his pre-Weight Watchers hockey jerseys. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Probably should put that on for a live stream. Maybe yeah. I'll wear that next week. Uh, you only started briefly. I don't want to. your look. I don't want to uh, get context met on someone else's jersey that belongs to someone who's actually famous. <laughs> okay. I think we got a famous person here. At least they say they are. It's a. Uh... Hi, Odin and Felicia. This is famous actor Jack Nicholson. I was in The Shining, just here to show some support. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thank you. The best part about the internet is nobody ever lies. It's great. Yeah. yeah. You just take everyone at face value. Absolutely. Wasn't that uh, Abraham Lincoln said you should believe every quote on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, I believe Abraham so. Abraham Lincoln, I believe yeah. so, yeah. I, yeah. I can trust that guy. Isn't he a lamp in one of our episodes? I think so, yeah. Now, the sad thing is, you know, the guy could be totally serious, but I doubt it. <laughs> uh, like the meme, has doubt. <laughs> but if it's... Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, Carlson says, hey, Odin, can I get a shout-out? You do amazing work. Keep it up. 
Thank you, Carlson. No, I don't do shout outs, Carlson, because if I do shout outs for people like you, Carlson, then, then people, everyone will ask me. What's yeah. Carlson's last name? I don't know. Carlson Lazzarato. Lazzarato? Lazzarato? Lazzarato. Carlson Lazzarato. Let me let me just butcher your your last name. <laughs> how, how about Carl Lazaroth? There, you're now a Cthulhu monster. You're welcome. Okay. It's 2:15. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, I good. Think I'm, I think I'm, we're kind I'm of just rambling today. away. <laughs> I'm just talking to these people. <laughs> this is exactly what we're going to do again, starting at midnight. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up our stream today. But I want to remind everyone who who just just popped in. Hey, Will, you want to be a moderator again uh, at midnight? This upcoming Saturday, California time, so adjust for your local time, uh, Felicia and I are going to be doing a two-hour-ish uh, Halloween wrap-up uh, a, a live stream. And uh, we're going to celebrate costumes and et props and everything. Dress yeah. up, you know, happy dress up holiday. We're not going to fool ourselves into thinking that we're going to try and build something while we sit here and ramble. We're just going to sit here and ramble. The whole time and the, the fun thing about it is it's it's halloween night so we want to see your costumes that you did if you find a creative way of sending us pictures uh but it's also daylight savings for those of us that are subjected to it so during the the live stream it'll 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 be two hours to us but the clock it'll only be one hour so it'll be the, the time warp live stream double midnight madness double midnight madness that's what i've called it in my head <laughs> and right now we're trying to secure a, a, a cameraman a third person to actually help us out here so we might be able to do a haunted tour of the building. Yes. So something a little extra to Show look forward to. Show what y'all missing. I'm going to set up a chat exclusive for my Patreons. Uh, so if, if you're not on, on, on my Patreon, you can go ahead and go check that out. Uh, there's, there's a level that will get exclusive access to this chat room where you can send us questions beforehand because midnight for us is horrible 30 a.m. for the rest of the world. That way uh, you can actually get questions to us early, we can answer them, and then you can see it in the replay of the live stream if, if you actually want to sleep like a normal drunk person on Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and also, I want to see your guys' costumes. Totally want to see your costumes. Want, like, we're the last people to celebrate, so it gives y'all plenty of time. Right, exactly. To take pictures, send them. <laughs> Speaking as, as the world turns, we're the last people to celebrate, right? Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're at the end of the cycle. We're kind of the end of the cycle. There's, we're, we're not. There's some, there's some people that have after credits, right? But we're, 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 we're the West Coast of, 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 of the U.S. from the U.S. is like, you know, we're the only place point of view. We're the last ones, so. Yeah, Alaska <laughs> And Hawaii. Well, Alaska, Hawaii. There's a few other islands, and yeah. yeah but. but kind of the <laughs> right. trail end before. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Halloween. So double Halloween. Midnight. Double midnight live stream. So, same bat place, same bat channel. <laughs> and we're not working on the armor on that shoot. No, we're not we working at all. We'll just be playing with costumes. Yes, I will answer all your costume questions. And there I will you see yours. Yes, absolutely, please. So that's our next live stream, and then we'll be back again next Monday at noon, streaming for two hours as we get another 15 minutes worth of work done and talk to you, which is more the point of the live stream, but it's kind of fun to have a goal, something to work on. And we're going to continue doing this Witcher thing uh, until it's finished, or in, uh, let's not let Felicia's boss know her, 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 her time changes. Yeah. I don't want her to change your schedule, oh, she, your no. work schedule. Oh, I have it's fine. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Will Wilkins, for popping in as a moderator. Thank, thank you, Astarius Prime, for popping in as a thank moderator. You. Thank you, Lazaroth, for, for having a shout out. Uh, <laughs> Carlson, great Roblox spaceship. That was a, a lot of fun to look at. Going to continue to try and play with this one camera being focused closer so I can actually pick something up and show you. So I'm not going, hey, look, it's a knife. To you, it's three pixels wide. But to me, it's a knife. So it's going to be a living, growing thing until this... It's never going to be well, well oiled. It's always going to be the Welcome to the Odin Makes Costume Shit Show. And I appreciate you streaming with us. <laughs> I appreciate it, too. Thank you, guys, for spending time with us. And next time, Toby will be back. <laughs> and next time, Toby will be back. Toby. And Bruno. And Bruno, absolutely. Yeah. If you want to find uh, Felicia, she's E-E-S-H underscore 87 on Instagram. Uh, and of course, I'm Odin. I've got my Facebook group, Odin's Makers. I've got a, a Reddit thread, R Odin Makes. I'm Odin Makes on Instagram. And, and just if you want to be else. one of the special Patreon members that can ask us the questions for the Midnight Special you have, you're making. Yes. After the stream. <laughs> after, the, after the stream, I'll be setting up the Discord. So there's going to be an Odin Makes Patreon uh, room specifically on, on Discord. Thank you. Yeah. I've plugged it like three times, but here at the end, I forget about it. So I talked over you a little bit. Do you have anything else you want to share? No, I think I'm good. 
think I'm ready to go get some lunch. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to go finish up editing for the, this Wednesday's video. My wife's been working on it this whole time, but I got some final footage for it yesterday at the swap meet, so I need to go make sure I can incorporate that in and write the actual ending so we can get it out to you for 10 a.m. This Wednesday is going to be this week's video. So, uh, and then uh, tomorrow I actually got to start working on next week's because why work ahead? <laughs> South Park can do it in seven days. I can too, right? I need to work ahead. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, it's the nature of it. It's the nature it? of it. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. I'm going to grab the mouse from you. Here, I'll trade so, all right. So, for the uh, for the eighth minute in a row, thank you very much, everyone. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat right now because I'm trying to find where the off button is. Just hidden over here on this side. So, we can click end stream and we get a, uh, a confirmation window up where we can hold the mouse over and go, thank you guys very much. It's been a lot of fun being here. See you in you know, just six days. Bye. Bye. Oh. Are they gone yet? <laughs>